some corner of our hearts A little star so dark No light escapes its grasp Scars we've never felt She loved me for my dark star Said I never tried to hide I loved her for a dark star And all the tears she cried Even though it's over now And we've gone our separate ways We hold each other Dark stars, the remainder of our days. Fought against my dark stars. Good evening. Welcome. Wonderful to be on Gino's spot. Relax, sit down. Coming out of PE town. Drink, find a shot. Never mind your liver. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle. And exercise your middle. Have a Gino shot. Gino's shot. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Get to Gino's spot. Have a giggle and exercise your middle Get to Gino's spot Gino's spot Like I said Fred was just a note with a smoke Shut down was just a cheeky word to pick I know you all skim this is a joke But it can happen so bloody quick Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! We are here in Gino's spot tonight. Namaste to all of you. I hope that you've all re relaxed, beautifully relaxed on this Tuesday. Woo! In the beginning of the week, like never no, during lockdown, we weren't even allowed to go to work. Everybody stays at home, so you don't know what day it is, or what year it is, or what even like your name is. <laughs> That's right. Hello, Carol Jacobs. Nice to see you there. I hope you haven't uh, got a nice drink in your hand. I've got a pink gin. Look at that. It's like freaking see-through. You give it on, Stimp. Hopwood says, Anton Collett's lovely to have you here. Anton as well. So many years together uh, doing so many songs in so many different places and even once when you electrocuted me that I've forgiven you for now. Yeah, that's right. The <laughs> one time. And I hope you all have got a nice drink together and, and, and you've put a little bit of like mm, something inside. Hello Vivian, Trebek. Hello, long time no see. You've clearly been drinking all your prize that you won. You just won a prize and then you run away for how many weeks until you run out and then you need another prize. So I suppose that's why you're back. Well, don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. It is fine. You can have a drink now. You can take whatever you like. I hate, I hate people who take drugs. Those guys, like airport security and police guys. They freak me out, Brian, and it's, it makes me so, so upset, you know? Because if people can just chill, drugs have just had a bad rap, you know? If you skim about, considering all the beautiful things that, that we've got out of drugs, if you look at like rock and roll and like sporting achievements, uh, stuff like that, you know, wow, you know, is it such a bad thing after all? <laughs> yeah, hey, good evening, Rob Taylor. Nice to looking forward to this one, PG-25. <laughs> PG-25 indeed, namaste to you. I hope so. And, you know, my, I've, I've been fighting a little bit with my wife, Celery. Um, Celery's been, you know, she's been a bit, like we say, offish in the business uh, with me. She hasn't been talking to me. She's been like completely blo like, like blocking. And, uh, she sent me a blank SMS today. <laughs> I tune her like, why you sent me a blank SMS? She says, because I'm not talking to you. 
<laughs> All right, Brian Wilkinson. The Wilkinson sword is here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right, because we have Tom Hopwood on the show tonight. I can't wait. He's going to be discussing all his his stuff, his travels as well as his history, where he comes from, where he was born, where he saw his first thing that he saw. Yeah, Duncan Phillips, nice to see you. Bring that Hopwood. Okay, he's coming now. He's coming. He's just having a bit of a dope backstage. Just keep loosening the nerves, brah. Brian, just be patient. you got to be patient. You know, I, I was patient when I went traveling. I went, went um, to the islands from po Polynesian islands there in the Pacific. Hey? And we're on this boat and I pull in there. There's like cannibals, brah. Cannibals on the island. You know what happened, brah? So these, I'll, I'll, make, I'll make friends with the first bunch of cannibals because you're like, you going to try and get the biggest bunch because like, they protect it from the other cannibals because like, those cannibals are eating or is trying each other. So you've got to like, be in clumps. Otherwise, it's much more safer to be in clump of, of cannibals if you ever you can use that as a tip. Okay, so like the one, the cannibal, he, he changed me a story. Like he was walking down past a whole lot of other cannibals and, and, he, and they went to the mission station, hey, and, um, and they, they attacked it, you know, and got uh, uh, to eat. <laughs> so, that, so they're leading him, you know, to, to the spot and, and they have to be uh, like a cauldron, okay, um, and uh, and so so we're basically, basically cooking the o, like um, check him out and he's just not cooking. <laughs> it's like it's like it's tough as hell. Like he's it's, it's like we're trying we're trying to heat up, put in more coals on the fire, and try and get in get it boiling. We boiling, 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 bro. And <laughs> and nothing's like happening. <laughs> so my friend says, hey, w what did the guy look like? Okay. Um, I said, well, he had like um. He had like a bald head on top, okay, and and like he had a bald head, and then he had like hair around the sides, like this, just around the sides and the back, and it like totally bald on top, and then he, he was wearing like this brown smock kind of vibe, okay, with sandals, and like a like a rope around the middle, okay, with brown. Everything's like sack, sort of sackcloth kind of vibe, and it's like, oh. No, bro, you're doing it all wrong. <laughs> you mustn't be having me in a cauldron, bro. This guy's a fryer. <laughs> yeah, so you got to know how to cook the O's right. You know what I mean? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gina's Spot, eh? And uh, we've got lots of people on board. We're going to do a little song. We're going to sing your comments. So stick up some comments. Tell me where, you, where you're from and what you're doing. That's right, na na. Whoa, and around the time has come. Go away, away, there's work to be done. Let my bow would play on, play on, play on, play on. People dancing all in the street. I feel the music all in them. Come on, and Wendy, Tompkins, Thompson. Vivian, come on and sing along. I said, yeah, Wayne Heath, evening, Gino, Nikki, oh, Snape and Bolton, oh, Peter Bardhurst, that's right, he's here. Go, Hoppy, Ho, Woo, Hom, Woo, Ho, Popwood, Monique Basson. I hope you've got a glass of wine. Barrier. I'm to get started. You can't slow down. That's right. Vivian Tropics, a merry-go-round. Hey, Marcus Stanborough, go to Hey, and Brendan McGraw. He said, "Who is that Hopwood Oak?" You gotta see now. That's right. That's right. Oh. Woo! What is the cannibal's phone number? One no phone. One no. One oh eight one oh. <laughs> Somebody just sent me for ya. Craig F and Darkis. That's right. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah. The best 
show of the week twice in a week every third two times now oh night ain't he oh all right long yeah Stuart bought Peter at the music kitchen always yeah Terry Zekaru is watching from Seattle all night long all the way from the US Greg Ependakis and John Skippers he's got a cop of John that's right Brendan McGraw he's there saying aka spider Brent Kozak all the way from nice now or George or wherever you now that's right Chris Roberts the man Woo! That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Gina's part tonight. And we have our the amazing, the incredible Tip One, Tim Hopwood. He's waiting backstage. He's having a little bit of gin and tonic, just the same as me. I love it. Thank you very much to our sponsors, of course, uh, Fitch and Leeds. Fitch and Leeds, as well as Spa. Spa. Fantastic to have a, to have a little drink every now and again. Lovely, lovely. Just Fitch and Leeds and Spa. And... Um, and also thank you to uh, Amubia uh, for our, our internet that, uh, that's been going very nicely now. Uh, Edric, Edric Roll, uh, nice uh, Roy, Roy Ribbekum, I can't so much, I can't so much, I can't so much, I can't so much, Roy Ribbekum spring over the draad. <laughs> ja, nee. <laughs> so, uh, and Monique Besson saying, hoppie, 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 that's right, he's coming, he's hopping, he's hopping his way, he's hopping his way towards the, uh, the stage. But before we go and go there, ladies and gentlemen, we always have Darren Fuller. Darren Fuller does a, a little bit of what we should be watching every every Tuesday. So let's have a look and see what we should be watching on Netflix and such like. Hello, Derry, how are you doing? I'm very good in yourself, good sir. Uh, very nice indeed. I see you've done away with the tiara this this time, but you have a very nice lights behind you. Right? Yes, exactly. So I, I do have a theme, which is I see obviously that. blood. Yes, the heart. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, art and blood together. <gasps> nice. Blood art. Oh well, uh, there is a little bit of blood, but mostly just the hearts. <laughs> oh, the heart. Oh, hearts. I thought you said art, like blood. Oh, no, art, like actually. No, it's Valentine's. Oh, of course it's Va it's Valentine's on the fourteenth. It's com it's coming up very. So you're right. So Indeed. thank you for reminding me because I, I might have been in cuck then. <laughs> and it's a Sunday, so it's unlikely to remember as Ooh. well. So you can't yes. run out and buy something quickly. Oh, that's right. Also, I think okay. Oh, excellent. Well, Darren, tell us what you got this week for Valentine's week. I shall. Hello, hello, everyone. Note. No, to the lights and the and the hearts. Okay, so um, yes, it's Valentine's Day this Sunday, so um, I've decided to rate and suggest a number of films, new and old, um, to get you into the Valentine's Day spirit. So, and because uh, my boyfriend knows how much I love wine, and everyone knows how much I love wine, we're going to give it a rating system, which is essentially uh, a uh, glasses of wine. So, okay, so I'm going to start. Okay, look, this is a classic. This is a classic. If you've seen it, if you haven't seen it, that's terrible and you have to. But The Princess Bride, The Princess Bride is just, it's a Valentine's Day classic. It's a romance classic. It's just a beautiful romance. It's fantasy. It's swashbuckling. It's a fantastic film. I I've watched it obviously too many times. I watch way too many rom coms, just FYI, as many films as murder. Um, so we give that eight out of ten glasses of wine because it's just lovely and it's very romantic. Okay, then I'm going to go through a lot of films. So I'm going to try not linger on any of them, but watch them. Watch at least five of them. So Bridget Jones's Diary. I know it's an old film. I know it's been out for ages, but who? doesn't love Colin Firth, Hugh Grant, Renee Zellweger, not to mention, obviously, it is a modern-day adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. So that is, I'm sorry, because I relate to Bridget so much and because it's just such a beautiful romance, I have to give that 9 out of 10 glasses of wine, and fancy wine. Okay, so while you were sleeping, 
also old classics, Sandra Bullock, Bill Pullman. It's so lovely. I know there's a Christmas theme because I love Christmas as well, but it is a romance. It's such a beautiful film. It's one of my favorites. So that also gets nine under 10 glass wine. I'm being pretty generous. Um, I'm pretty generous with all of these, but there's like one or two. Okay, so Valentine's Day. This is where, eh, you know, um, it is a Valentine's Day themed film and it has a lot of cute moments in it. Look, it has Jennifer Garner. She is my favorite. So, you know, you can watch it, but it's not the best. So that gets like six to seven ish glasses of wine, but it's still worth a watch if you haven't seen it. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society. It's quite a mouthful, but it's actually such a beautiful film. It's uh, it's set in World War II, but it's also very romantic and very literary, as the name would suggest. I give that eight out of ten glasses of wine. Roman Holiday, which has my uh, – Ooh, who is my favorite? Audrey Hepburn and Jennifer Garner are kind of tight. Roman Holiday is just gorgeous. It was um, Audrey Hepburn's first feature film. It's a beautiful romance. Um, that gets eight out of ten glasses. Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, and Before Midnight. I don't know if you guys know these films. They are a little bit indie, but it has Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy in it. They are beautiful, beautiful films. Um, before Before Sunrise is the first film, Before Sunset is the second, and Before Midnight is the last. Those are definitely worth eight out of ten glasses of wine. Very romantic, very lovely. Very French. One Day. Okay, now, guys, I don't know about this film, okay? One Day is uh, Anne Hathaway. And Jim Sturgis, who is gorgeous and was in Across the Universe. Um, some people have said this is a beautiful film, and I thought it was to a point. So um, I'm going to give you a, a tearjerker warning. Um, I give it six out of ten glasses of wine. If you like that kind of thing, then it's a really lovely film. But it's 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 a bit it's a tiny bit heartbreaking for me. Okay, always be my maybe. I know you've probably seen that as well. Also on Netflix, nine out of 10 glasses of wine. Absolutely lovely. Um, Under the Tuscan Sun, if you're feeling a little bit, you know, if you want a female empowerment romantic film, really lovely. Diane Lane, I'd give that eight out of 10. The Other Woman, I've saved for if anyone's feeling um, jilted or vengeful, you know, because we there are all kinds of valentine's days so i mean if you're feeling a little bit cross or angry or you want to like stab someone the other woman is a very great revenge film and then sliding doors nine out of ten absolutely lovely gwyneth Paltrow and john hannah a little bit of heaven i absolutely adore this film it is um also a tear jer tear jerker warning but I give it seven out of 10 glasses of wine and I only give it low because of the tearjerker, but it's a beautiful, beautiful film. And then lastly, if you're really feeling angry and you hate Valentine's Day and you do love bloody murder, then I would suggest watching Valentine with David Boyanaz because there's a lot of stabbing, but it is a Valentine's Day theme. So that's me. I hope you have a lovely Valentine's Day on Sunday. Absolutely, I will do. I maybe watch the stabbing movie. I think, <laughs> I think it's that's a, it's um, a good film. Yes, no, very nice. I'll, 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 have, I'll have a look at that, and then, and then the uh, I, I like the the wine. The wine is good. You probably should give the crappier movies more wine, and then because then they'll the, it sort of uh, sort of counteracts the fact that they're crap. I hear what you're saying. So, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so like a ten me, out of ten wines would be like a really crap movie because then you would really love it by the end. So, like, um, Sharknado needs, like, 20 out of 10. 20. Glasses. 20 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> you need to fair pass enough, out. Fair enough, fair enough. Yes, yeah, so oh, I, like, I, I like the wine, so. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, very nice. Thank you very yeah. much, Darren. You're oh, a legend. And we love your thing. And, and of course, you've got the, always the red with because of the blood um, the blood bank. So, you know, make sure that you yeah. support uh, San, 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 South African blood. blood Services because that's where you are all day working Sucking so people's true. blood, indeed. I do <laughs> like that blood. <laughs> in a good way, in a normal way. Yes, yes a normal way, yes. Thanks, normal Darren, way. you're legend. <laughs> Ciao.
<laughs> oh my word all right darren fuller always always on the tuesday lovely she's always good got something on some some sort of strange outfit today it was the blood 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 all right now after we come to our guest we've come to our guest indeed he's had enough gin in the back there i'm going to read a little a little intro for him over here which i've got from jean wright who was a sculpture and and an art journalist and uh, she wrote something that's quite, uh, I, th I think it, it describes uh, Tim pretty well. Photographer Tim Hopwood has, over a 25-year period, accumulated a body of largely unpublished images which form a pungent and perceptive dossier of the changing social and physical face of the city of Port Elizabeth, its inhabitants and surrounding environment. A definitive body of work was recently acquired by the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan Art Museum. That's right, St. George's Park in Port Elizabeth, and uh, largely because of his take on the inner city urban decay of PE. And it somehow rep uh, reflects the wider malaise which is endemic in many South African cities. These images are a record of the place where fragments of history and memory and the timelessness of the surrounding landscape intersect with the industrial incursion of both human and environmental agents. He records a very particular place where people like us live. Indeed. Tim Hopwood. <laughs> All right. Name are you known? There are some who call me Tim. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome onto our stage to Mr. Tim Hopwood. Welcome. Fantastic to have you on. I don't know if we've got the mics working here. Let's make sure we've got everything up and going. I've got your, we've got your gin ready to go here. Yeah. So All right. We're just going to see you. Yes, we've got some. So much. Which, 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 no, which hey. you go in, move your chair in a uh, little bit over there. Uh, move your chair in. We've got some of your some of your photos that are going to be uh, cycling over there cycling. as well. So we mustn't get too distracted by that because we have some uh, some great great pics that we're going to look at just now as well. Um, but Tim, fantastic to have you on. Thank you for having me, Gino. Thank you for having me. Man, how's the sound? Uh, All right. Yes, how's, how's it sound? Can everybody hear Tim? I hope that you can. Otherwise, pull it closer. It's no, fine, Tim. You can do that. It's your, it's your very game. own microphone. Very close to you very there as well. Microphone. Look at that. The picture of the Reno in the back. Our first backdrop. Fantastic. The one cycling in the background, I'll just say for the viewers. Thank you for everyone yes. for joining us, by the way. Yes, um, indeed. We, we've got lots of people online. Look, look, looks like we've got some, uh, really got some comments coming on, on, on here. I see Mark Stamber. There we go. We want to. I'm here, we Marky, want to. I'm here watching for, I hope you've got your wine, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I think Darren should drink the wine. I, th I think. If it's seven out of ten. Then she must, must have it. seven glasses. And then we'll see how she does by yeah. the end of the. Uh, is this movie, <laughs> this is the best movie I've ever seen, but it's, I think it's one glass. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. It'll be good. Britain and Mormon. Hello, Britain and BA's online. Yane is like a, you take the art out of heart. Indeed. Hey, Hop would give them cuck brew and, 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 uh, uh, and the COVID. Yeah, my anarchist <laughs> friend, Jeremy. How's anarchist. Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeremy Clark, last to have you on there as well. He's it's been just, a great time with him in Cornwall. It is, is there, it's, it's Jeremy Clark and Jeremy Clarkson that are both... Uh, uh, they're both uh, uh, oh, this wire is sitting here in water. Oh, What's going to happen here? No, oh, about gracious. That. We're all going to be electrocuted. It's <laughs> myriad wires <laughs> emanating from many and varied <laughs> forms of electrical apparatus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drew, Drew Price is on Andrew Price there for go Tim from uh, the UK the crew, the hey look at that as, uh, Drew took me up the gherkin the gherkin <laughs> <laughs> I don't London, know what that you is. Know the gherkin, the massive, the gherkin in London. The oh, yeah. oh right. You I thought you were talking about the gherkin. I thought <laughs> you were talking about the something gherkin. else no, there. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great view from the top of the gherkin. Let me tell oh, you. Bet it was. <laughs> oh, I've seen the gherkin. Yeah, indeed, I've seen the gherkin. A big, big hello from us in Botswana. Hello, Sandy. It's looking good, indeed, Sandy. Uh, and Paul West, he's it's in happy West. Happy birthday, Paul West. His birthday. His birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, Paul West. Long time, chummies, B A. Fan okay, yes. We could just spend the whole night saying. I know. Saying, saying how's it in the comments, it, Rob uh, Taylor. Uh, Rob <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> uh, look, looks yeah, like yeah, you yeah, look yeah, like you didn't friends. finish school with me. Make up for the. Like, you look younger. You, you do. You do. You look young. Uh, you, yeah, you I still cut my hair. Yeah, and, and there's not a lot, not a lot of grey. I mean, even I've got more grey than you. 
it was lots the other day when you saw me, eh? <laughs> yeah, it was a bit long. more. Yeah. It chopped it a bit. <laughs> chopped it a bit, it goes. It goes in it. Mike Hoskin. Oh, hey, hey, how's it, Mike? Is that Mike Hoskin that was at Clarendon Park as well? I remember Mike Hoskin from uh, Clarendon. I knew him from high school. He's in our high school. He's a fines administrator. Oh, so we all right. Yeah, on our WhatsApp group for school. And Peter, <laughs> may I call you darling? You great poof. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, Stuart Potikita, <laughs> another a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart Potikita is on there. Vernon uh, Grand. Vernon Cookamur. Vernon uh, Cookamur uh, Grand Gradridge. Yeah, how's it, Vernon? Says. Do you know Vernon as well? I don't yeah. know where. Barry Hoffmeyer, Botchinsonson. He always gets the name wrong. Oh, uh, what is that? Botchin. No, he's got it horribly wrong. Botten Jensen. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what that one is. Mark's there's, there's Plumber Rob in the photo. Oh, there. Plumber Rob in the photo. Mm. Indeed, RIP. One of my most interesting neighbours. A neighbour? Was he a neighbour? Yeah, neighbor? he was my neighbour for, uh, and, well, until he died. Yes, um, in an odd accident at uh, G. Yeah, he, uh, was, he was banned from every bar in, <laughs> in Central and then every bar in PE, and he had to go <laughs> further and further afield to have a drink. Uh, I wish my, my mate Mark uh, to meet him to drop off um, some dacha for him. Uh, and he had to meet him in his band from all the bars. He had to meet him in a little Wendy house, a clubhouse, <laughs> at the Mashy Golf Course. <laughs> and they started, and he, started, he got in there, have a beer. Uh, and um, he asked Mark, hey, how's the painting going? Oh, Mark said, yeah, blah, 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 it's going well. Yeah. Uh, he asked Robert, because Rob did part-time sculpture. You know? okay, it was yes. actually really good, it was a, but right. he didn't do more of it. Yes. And, and less drinking, it's to be loud. So Mark asked him, how's the sculpture going? And this old toppy at the bar said, sculpture? <laughs> you, what do you sculpt? He <laughs> splabbed his fist on the counter. I sculpt emotion. <laughs> 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 no, Rob, Rob was a character. Oh, so excellent. Exactly. You've got to, you got to give that to One of those true Eastern Cape, Lower Albany types. You oh, know? right. Okay. But um, one of those. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you want to, we, we, had, there, uh, yeah. we had Alan Veyer on the other day. Oh, yeah, that must have been. Fantastic. Yeah, man, I meant to you. watch that. I can still go back and watch that. That Albany thing. I mean, it's part of PE, you know, mm. and I mean, what you do... No, Alan Bay is so funny. Yeah, oh, yeah no, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. Yeah. But, but he, you know... Um, Great storyteller. Um, obviously, he, he said he, he actually gave a story where, where he was, you know, up in Joburg and up in these places where sometimes he... The, the people don't, don't get, get that. Yeah, they yeah. don't get that Albany thing, you know. Yeah. You don't realise it because yeah. we are here. Yeah, yeah, you say pineapples, and they don't know what. You, <laughs> they don't know why it's funny. Pineapples, you know? but pineapples. Yeah, another one was <laughs> Ethel Trollope the other day. He was, he was, he, okay. he so went straight into that that that, that, that lingo, man. He was talking about yeah, yeah the pineapples. What's so right? dry that I'm I'm faxing my I'm faxing the the, the sheep to the cow up. <laughs> <laughs> and there was that lovely cartoon book. I think Alan Vai did it with. A cartoonist, just like his stories, and this cartoonist did Tales yeah. of Lower Albany or something. This cartoonist, oh, wow. and there was this one of this like this cricket field yeah. in you know, Bathurst or Salem yes. or somewhere. <laughs> and there's this professor with his long hair and his tie, and this young girl by his side, yeah. and this drunk farmer. <laughs> are, are you a proper doctor or one of those things from Rhodes? <laughs> <laughs> Classic, you know. Look at that beautiful. Those are your dogs. Those are your dogs. Yeah, there. I thought um, these pictures in the background they are um, pictures of of PE that have never made it onto exhibitions of mine. So okay. it's you know things that don't fit into other yeah. bodies of work and exhibitions I've had. And then like dogs, you know, everybody loves pictures of dogs. I'll put one of my pictures on Facebook or yeah. Instagram. I get like fifteen likes, but I yeah. put a dog on. Like, oh, <laughs> a million. <laughs> You can't it's go wrong with dogs. I know you can't. I mean, you, and I mean, I had, um, yeah. I had that, that uh, big white Alsatian there. His name was Mithril. Um, Mithril. Uh, Mithril. Uh, white Mithril. Swiss okay, Shepherd. Sorry. He was my, my ex-partner's dog, Jane, but we okay. shared him. All right. And, um, and there's this, actually this dog, this really famous dog on Instagram. Yeah. I don't know if you're on Instagram. Uh, and, but I don't, I don't frequent don't follow it. dogs. Yeah. No, no, well, if you want to see the most amazing, that's a cool shot of Very this. Very nice. <laughs> Mithril having a turd. And <laughs> The little husky. Um, go to, uh, what's it called? Rustus, Rasta White Shepherd. Yeah. You will find the most amazing fur of, of dogs that really? you've ever seen. This woman, she's obviously a professional photographer. She yeah. really knows what she's doing. Lives in Switzerland. Yeah. She's got this white Swiss shepherd like Mithril. Yeah. This spectacularly beautiful dog. Man. In these 
impossibly beautiful landscape the <laughs> matterhorn in the background oh, and blue sky and snow and it's just insane this is <laughs> thousands of these pictures of this gorgeous dog oh, you got like half a million followers you know? yes like, no, I'm, I'm gonna, so I'm you gonna, can't go wrong with dogs what's it called um uh, white uh, swiss rasta Rust, white shepherd rasta white shepherd yeah um, no. Can I have a look at that? Yo, awesome rakes with Bronovain Craig Pinnock here because my phone just got started. <laughs> no, Nina. no, yes. no, he's got Nina's phone. <laughs> oh, I see. He oh, that. He's no, you must steal stone. your girlfriend's phone, Good man. Good Lord, yes, man, yes. Craig. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ed. Sure. Ed Lennon. Sure. Ed Lennon, indeed. He also taught you. Is that right? Ed didn't teach me um, anything. <laughs> he was just there. No, he, had never, he, was, he was never my teacher. Actual that teacher. That came out wrong. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ed, Ed, Ed never taught, taught him nothing. Ed, you never taught him a thing, man. <laughs> but he was never my teacher. Uh, next to the Maraca shop. Uh, I'll, um, that was uh, John, John Dickon. That was a ref reference to John Dickon. Oh, right. Um, we were, we, John played with us as well because yeah. he was playing on, uh, played with your, on, on your album. Yeah, such okay. a great, uh, yeah, yeah, a f fantastic percussionist and, and a fantastic guitarist. Eh? I mean, yeah, he's amazing. my favorite acoustic guitarist in PE. I've never seen anyone play quite like him. Beautiful. Eh? And yeah, it just it's absolutely like people sit there with their mouths open yeah. when John plays. Uh, it, he is, and, and, and he's got a he's got a great voice. I mean, he's so yeah. shy, he's so, so humble. Yes, yeah, eh? so, so shy and humble, and, and a brilliant guy. I love yeah. John Chibetti. No, he's he's, he's claim to fame, of course. Uh, and I've I've told <clears> this a couple of times. And I'm, so somebody tag John Dickon in this because um, his claim to fame was that he was in the the advert with the sailors. What was it called? Not uh, Right God. Uh, yeah, he was a model. Impulse. In Pat Impulse. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. uh, the okay, impulse wow. man where, where the sailors were chasing yeah. that girl down the <laughs> down the road. beach or down something. the road. Yeah, yeah. I mean, vaguely yeah. Rings a bell. He yeah. was one of the sailors. Okay. I remember yeah. I was chummies with him in Cape Town in the nineties when I was living there, and he was doing modelling. You know, <laughs> yes, to make a bit modeling. of extra money because you don't make much money as a <laughs> muser. <laughs> no, so um, we this, uh, Wayne Wayne is uh, referring to the time that I he said, uh, "Where did you get that? I got these maracas. I had these maracas. He said, where where did you get the maracas?" And I couldn't remember. So I just said, ah, the Maraca shop. <laughs> Maraca shop? He said, what Maraca shop? No, the one down Albany Road, corner Albany Road and, and, Main, and Main, Main Street. You know the guy, the guy there was a guy that went, you don't know the guy there? So I said, the so no, just, he said, no, the guy with the, with the sombrero. <laughs> I was pushing it further and further. And she's, ah, shit. <laughs> the bloody Maracas. <laughs> oh, my word. Uh, Kelby Parker Smith, Parkin Smith, saying hi oh, from Hampshire. All how's over the world. It? Yeah, all, all my old school chummies. Yeah, how's it? That's yes, so amazing. Ex. School, where were you at school? Where did you, where, you born here? Were you born here? No, I was born in Pretoria. Pretoria? Um, so I had, yes, uh, most of my, uh, I said my, my, all my brothers were older than me. So they all grew up in Pretoria. And then we moved here when I was like six. So okay. my brothers were in high school when we moved here. Okay, okay. Um, but, and uh, then I went to... Um, we lived across the road from Grey because yeah. my dad inherited this broken old house that had been derelict for like five or ten years. Wow. From his father. A, a fixer-upper. Yeah, it had no <laughs> pipes, no doors, no, no nothing. No, yeah. no electrical wires, all been stripped. So we moved in there and, and I, for some reason, went to St. Augustine's. Oh, okay. I didn't go to Grey Junior. Good Catholic boy. Yeah. <laughs> so I went to St. Augustine's. It was a tiny little... Uh, Catholic school, maybe yes. like 15 people, 20 people in a class. Right at the cathedral. Yeah, by the cathedral. Yeah, right. yeah. Yes. But it was a rough school. Uh, yeah. You know, it yeah. was like central crabs, you know. <laughs> and some of my best mates, you know, Peter Bardenhorst, he was there. Yes. Um, Dave Winterburn, uh, Steve Uister. It, it was Ashley Ashington. He was there a couple of years ahead of me, yeah. <laughs> Somebody yeah. tag Ashley, please. Yeah. We, want, we want some representation from St. Augustine's here. So we didn't have like my. I was chummies with a couple of oaks from the from Junior Gray that lived nearby yeah. me, okay. <coughs> like Pete Williams and yeah, and uh, we didn't have like fields at St Augustine's. We had concrete <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. break time. We just we body just mist. Uh, Peter De Toys reminded me body mist kiss. That's exactly that's what it was. The yeah, ad, that's the yeah, ad. Yeah. That's the ad. <laughs> yeah, so we didn't play marbles and soccer at break. We just we just fought. Uh, we just clapped yeah. each other. <laughs> <laughs> it was very violent. Lots fighting. of fights and. <laughs> And then they tried, I was telling the story the other day, they tried to, yeah. um, they thought they'd somehow rescue us from our degeneracy and, yeah. and our, our <laughs> we're delinquents. We were a school of delinquents, basically. We were yes. all delinquents, all of us. Um, so they read us the cross and the switchblade, you know. All they right. talk about the yes. Nikki Cruz, the yeah. black drug addict. Yes. Uh, 
gang, Puerto Rican gang member in New York who finds the Lord. And yes, the cross. Oh, it had a terrible effect. Uh, it just backfired because <laughs> just the whole school just split into two groups. You know, there's two <laughs> gangs that are in the book, and the Oaks started bringing knives to school, and oh, it was chaos. <laughs> <laughs> you can't trust. But it was a lack of school. Can't trust the central oaks. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh my soul! So it didn't. It didn't happen. What, what was it? Um, uh, the nuns. The nuns. We only nuns had one nun. We had a, yeah. a, a vicious, vicious nun, Sister <laughs> Vianney. Okay. And everything was lacquer. Like my chummies at junior grade, they used to get caned and stuff when yeah. like sub B standard one. We didn't yeah. get that, you know. We just oh, okay. like okay, standard two. Miss Ben gave us a hit us on the backside with a tennis set bat. You know we'll that see, does oh, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, just makes one. a big noise. It's yes. no pain. Yes. <laughs> no, my chummies at junior grade were getting caned. Um, <laughs> but then you got to standard five. You had Sister yeah. Vianney. Okay. You don't understand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to quote Barnos, you don't understand. Okay. <laughs> she was ruthless, though. She just beat us all the time. Is it? Terrible. Nuns. Years later, she was a tough, leathery old Irish nun. She'd grab you by your, ha- by your hand and moor you with this big wooden ruler. <laughs> and your hand would be glowing and the kids would be dancing up and down. And you couldn't get your hand away. She was so strong. <laughs> yes. yes. And yeah. sometimes you pull your sideburns. Oh, up those ones. Punch you. Yeah, well, those teachers, oh. they knew how to get your sideburns. Yeah. Uh, they, they had that right. And, yeah. and this place here in your... Yes. This, oh, they pinch you like yeah, that. Yeah, this pinch oh. thing. What the hell? How did oh. they know? Where to, I, I, didn't, oh. I still don't know how to do that to somebody. Yes. That's hectic. No, it's like Dr. Spock. hardcore masseuse knows that. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> so years later, when I was at Rose, my folks phoned me up and they say... Um, uh, Timmy, Sister Vianney is stranded in Grahamstown. She needs a lift back to Port Elizabeth. I knew I was coming for the weekend yeah. or the holiday or something. Can you give her a lift? I said, not a chance. <laughs> Sister Vianney can walk. <laughs> Shame. Not a chance. <laughs> yeah, no, no, she was hectic. That's so funny. I just, I just saw things uh, pop up. By, um, was it Mariana Martin? Uh, see, she says, how's oh, it, hello, Mariana. They're missing senior at random places. There, there's Barnost there, Peter Barnost from St. Augustine's. Peter Barnost. Walking with his camera in Central, one of the original <laughs> Central Crabs. <laughs> Barry Barnost. Ah, same manier. <laughs> central Crab. He actually coined that phrase. I'm a Central Crab. <laughs> it, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, and that, that, uh, that church there. Yeah, that's there in uh, Richmond Hill. There's some history there. Park. Uh, I'm going to find that history there. That's, okay. uh, it's, uh, there's, there's an interesting story behind that. I don't, okay. I don't think it's, uh, I, I, I can't remember if it's actually been used at a church at the moment. I, no, I think it's been empty for a while. A long time, yeah, used. yeah. I'm not sure. No, there, there was a story about the church and the congregation was, was reduced and uh, it, you know, it just well. died out and then okay. came back again. So uh, I'll find out about okay. that. I'll find out about that. Yeah. And, um, and it's, so tell me about your, your, your early school, I mean, your Catholic, Catholic upbringing, confirmed and, and uh, did, you, did you do the, um, the whole Catholic thing? Yeah, I think, you know, when you're a kid, you know, ah, the ice is ice, arrived. The Thank ice you. is arrived. <laughs> when you're a kid, you know, you just want to have fun. You don't worry too much about that stuff. But I suppose it gets ingrained in you. You get indoctrinated. Yeah. Like uh, my friend Fergus Satchel. Uh, uh, Fergus. The, you know Fergus, that lawyer. Fer- I know Very the name. Very eccentric lawyer. He describes himself as a, a recovering Catholic. And that's, it's kind of like what you lapsed. are, you know. Yeah, reco- no, not lapsed. Recovering. Oh, recovering again. Okay. You lapsed, lapsed, lapsed but you're also recovering. You, yes. You're trying to undo the damage. It's been Indeed. done. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right. All the guilt and... Yes, oh, the flagellation. The, the flagellation. So, you know the, the story. Yes, I, yeah. I know it well. Yeah, that's... I remember they were flagellating us when I met Anton Carlitz. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Anton know. is also a recovering uh, Catholic... Uh, I played many, many gigs with him as well. Did you, did you know, you, were you, I was at uh, Clarendon Park with Anton. He yeah, must have joined yeah. you at Grey. Yeah, he was at the same sort of like confirmation class as me or catech- oh, right. they call it catechism. Catechism, yeah. that's right. They had right. all these yes. words, didn't they? The yes, you know, all the like catechism. Catechism <laughs> and uh, the little brown scapula. Oh, yes, and yes, And things that they wore on their necks. And the be- and Benedictus uh, and, the, yeah, and the, you know, those kind um, of words. Those, those acolytes. Yes. <laughs> God. All the terminology. Catechism. Yeah. Indeed. So, so uh, uh, Anton has said, yes, I remember you told me a story about Anton at the at Catechism. Yes, yeah, so um, that's where I first remember taking note of Anton. Um, I was in his class, and the, the, the Catechism teacher, her name was Bernice Wright. Yes. She was always going on about sin. And yes. 
Bad and, bad. You know, they're always doing that. Father Martin always going on yes. about masturbation, masturbation <laughs> every Sunday. You wonder, wh- why are you saying this? You know, years later, you think like, you were probably masturbating yourself too. That's why you're going on about it. Anyway. We don't want so to get anybody Bernice in trouble. Bernice Wright was going on and on about sin. And she, she goes around the class and asks, you know, what is the worst sin? Yeah. In your opinion, and everyone's going murder, <laughs> adultery. Yes. I don't think anyone said genocide. No. But anyway, so it gets to Anton, and he's like a puzzled look on his face. He's, he's normally got a great conviction. He says, yes. "Idle gossip." Idle gossip. <laughs> and everyone just <laughs> laughed. Eh? And he was most puzzled that we were laughing at him. <laughs> you're right, Anton. You're Idle right. Idle gossip. And actually, when you think about it, it's a terrible sin. <laughs> no, it is. It's, a, terrible, it's terrible the worst of all. Yeah. It's the worst of all. Yeah. The Buddhists <laughs> believe it's worse than murder because the murdered person is dead. He doesn't yeah. care. The person <laughs> the, you're gossiping about, you're killing him while he's alive. He's alive. He's yeah. still yeah. hitting him while he's alive. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. And, uh, Idle gossip. All oh, right, um, I, I see um, Budavos Mist here. Darren Fuller is, is asking about Budavos Mist. I missed the folk club. Can't wait to hear you live again, Tim. Lekker, Darren. Yeah. T- tell us a little bit about Budavos Mist. I think we've got a little video here that we can play of it, but, but give us a little bit of an introduction. Oh, yes, yeah, the one that Gary filmed. Yes. Um, so Budavos Mist was the first Afrikaans song I wrote. I've been a big fan of Afrikaans music for a long time. Yeah. Since, uh, since the Fool Fray days. Okay, you know, okay. When the full fret tour passed through Grahamstown and then yeah. the following year, Kurskum Bass and Valley and Swat came and just by chance stayed in our house for like 10 days, yeah. <coughs> which was crazy. I mean, that, that, and that was at that time when, when yes, that stuff no, was really, it was, it was grabbing hold, you know? Oh, yeah. Was it mid-90s? Yeah. Or? It, it was, and it was revolutionary, you know? Yeah. The Afrikaners had never had that youth rebellion. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, they hadn't. That people in the States had had in the 60s, you know? It, yes. was, that, it was the 60s in America hitting South Africa. Yeah, the yeah. Afrikaners. Uh, absolutely, and, uh, it was incredible to be to just witness it, and, and yeah. it was powerful, you know. Um, it, was, it was, and uh, so I've been a big fan of Afrikaans music, and and um, I've got this friend Annika, and oh, we were just talking the one day, and we were wanting to write a song together, and so we wrote that Burbos Mist together. I came up with the yeah. music, and the two of us came up with the words, we'll, we'll and it was an idea that uh, um, yeah. that actually got from. It was from Susie, that's right, Susie Bell, my friend Danny's ex-girlfriend. Um, <laughs> she was, I think we'd been to, we'd been to the Bathurst Oxbra. You know? Oh, okay. oh, yes. And there's like, they put all that, you know, there's mountains Place. of sausage. There's like a kilometer of sausage and it's all on these grills and yes. there's, there's the steam that comes off. Yes. It's not smoke, it's steam. Yes. And you can't see anybody, everyone disappears Yeah. the steam. Because it's so cold, yeah. it's getting colder. Yeah, and and the yeah. steam from the sausage. Beautiful. And she thought, wouldn't it be nice to write a love song about two people meeting in the Buravos Mist? <laughs> so, you know, a few years later, I did. I, I stole an idea and I wrote a love song. Oh, excellent. Let's yeah. have a look at it. Let's have a look at it.
Beautiful. And, uh, and some lucky musas there too. I don't know. Who's, who's on keys? No, but you missed the punchline. You cut it short. Uh, Gary did a cut. Uh, <laughs> did a cut it short. <laughs> Gary has, to, has time constraints. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my word. So, so uh, but who was on keyboards there? I, I, uh, that was a, a lovely show we did at, yeah. at uh, Art on Target. Uh, yes. My CD launch. Yes, I see um, Britain and uh, organized. CD that Joe and I did together. Yeah. Um, so Joe was playing on lead. Yeah. And you know, this really amazing musician is one of my favorite musicians in PE, Kendall Beedon. He was playing. Um, uh, keyboards and yeah, uh, Kendall, uh, Kendall, uh, that's who it is. Uh, uh, that funny, like, uh, what is that thing? It's a uh, euphonium. A uh, euphonium. euphonium, yeah. He's very multi talented. Yeah. And then we had Lloyd Martin, who was, yes, uh, yes you Lloyd. know, I mean, gee, he's James uh, Phillips's drummer, you brilliant. Know, just absolutely incredible. No, Lloyd is, is a and phenomenal, was, phenomenal drummer. Yeah. I really enjoy him. Yeah, so you know, sensitive and yeah, and then um, uh, Peter Human on bass, okay. a great, great bass player that's moved down here from Joburg. It was a really lovely show. I see King, Kim Danner. Hello, Hello, Kim. Kim. <laughs> lovely to, oh, lovely yeah, to see you online. Stuck for a in change. the desert there. In the Kim. desert. Whoa, we yeah. see you every now and again on Facebook in the desert there. She's always up to something, oh, Kim. Oh, yeah. you're a, you're a stick of dynamite. Yeah. Uh, I like watching Dynamic you two. Kim. Still, you start talking Buddha Wars while some of us are stuck in the UAE. Geel fleisch for you, Kim. <laughs> K-I-E-M <laughs> and that was, that was uh, Brett Nan saying it was Art and Target absolutely a uh, lovely lovely setup there beautiful yeah hey. so I started doing that about um, uh, when I first started having shows with a band initially it was me and Joe it's always Joe's and I have, a, have yeah. had quite a long partnership together yeah um, and we got uh, Jason Erlang played bass with us okay. for a while and then uh Stella Connick, when she was out here from Ireland, used to. Oh, my word. She was always the driver. Let's do a show together. Let's yes. do a show. She really liked my songs. And, wow. Um, she's such a great piano player. And, and Stella was at school and, with me from yeah, sub-8 yeah, to know Stella a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I thought, well, we're going to do something. Let's do it special, you know. And I'd read this thing long ago um, about, what was his name? That Irish musician, Daniel. Um, Daniel. Uh, oh, what's the guy's musician? Name? Yeah, solo, solo act. Anyway, he did this the series of shows in Dublin, okay. um, where he basically recreated his bedroom on a little stage, you know, with his wow. bed and his desk. And <laughs> took it all. So I thought, like, well, let me let me do this, you know, make yeah. my lounge. Yes. So I took stuff I had in my lounge and records and books and a turntable and isn't it brilliant? Uh, paintings that I had and sculptures and. Does it make yeah. you feel like more at home yeah, when you're on exactly, stage? Yeah. That, that, that's yeah. actually and, such and a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great Anton, weekend. Uh. Anton, don't worry, buddy. We got you. <laughs> so that there, that's the great Uncle Ben, Ben Decker. Oh, Ben Decker. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Who's, who's uh, Ben Decker? Tell me. Uh, ben Decker is that dude, that old toppy that lived in the cliffs in Port and John's in a cave for like oh, years. No, he was okay. a fascinating guy. Port and John's. Yeah. I'm sure Tim Whittaker will know a, him. No, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. He was a, he was a, there's even a bar named Ben's Bar. Oh, really? Port John's. Yeah, he was a legend. Oh, wow. Uh, like but like Bruce Gold of, of Port St. John's. <laughs> no, he didn't just do that. He also um, he ran for parliament in the mm. 60s against Sir de Villiers Graaf. I think he had a degree in philosophy from Cape Town or something. Wow. And then he also acted in a TV series called... Uh, he was Gaji Gopip. In the 70s, he was this <laughs> dude that lived with a bushman or okay. something. Oh, my word. Um, and, uh, yeah, he just had this enormous life outside of, you know, yeah. this larger-than-life character. And he was huge. He was like six <laughs> foot eight, you know. <laughs> yeah. She's like... Oh, well, that's a beautiful shot, that, you know. I've, I've included some little bits of I was tea. trying to think, where the hell was that? I've seen it. Yeah, so that's um, in St. George's Park. Ah. It's a wishing well ah. that's been cemented closed. Yes. Yes, we just filled it with down. cement. <laughs> no, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> no, no more wishes here. <laughs> cement <it> closed. Revenge for you, lady. What are you? German oh, TV service. Soul, I love that German TV service. I see a German TV service. It was a German guy who was coming here and was making this business. Where was this business? Where is that? That's down there by the stadium. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, German TV. <laughs> Is it, but it's going to be obviously, uh, obviously like a, a very um, like a political thing. What do you, what do you call propaganda TV? <laughs> <laughs> I think they call it German TV because there's this, you know, the Germans are so, you uh, know, oh, so good organized. with technology and organ. Oh, yeah, I see. It's no, like, geez. like I mean, uh, I collect records and the German pressings are what I collect because yeah, they oh. sound just so amazing. Wow. 
Okay, okay. You know, and the German hi fires and you know, yes, of course, they of make course. good stuff. The Germans and the Harman Japanese Kordel are like what, what the color, the yeah, thing, yeah. blau punkt. I don't know. There's um, oh, tell us the punchline. Uh, Gary wants to know the punchline from the from the the song. <laughs> oh, um, well, he drops his chop in the yes. sand yes. from the bry, <laughs> and then um, he gets a. Uh, uh, he, she like picks it up for him. Said, "Beich to starch af. They'll like chop you up." <laughs> and then she puts it in his hand with a phone number, you know. Oh. And then years later, they have like this marriage and or thing yeah. and blah blah yeah. blah, and they jewel and they smoke all and yeah. And uh, and then years later, they at another bride and he checks his friend also drop his chop. And she picks it up. For oh, him. oh dear! And then she disappears into the blue uh, mist. <laughs> for Dwayne, yeah. and he mist. That's it. <laughs> oh yes, so it's a pillar. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's the end of that. <laughs> Britain and Will on the Tim was a very shy guy, and remaking his lounge bed eased his anxiety. It's it's a brilliant plan, uh, Tim. I, I tell you what, uh, it's a good idea to because those things do bring you a little bit of mm. solace, mm. you know. No, that's not really why I did it. I did it because it looked cool. Hey, you like it um, it no, cool. I've got the pills now. I got the, the pills. Beta, beta blockers. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Helps a bit. With oh, jeez, yeah. I can't perform without them. So I took <laughs> half off a beta blocker before I came here. I, I get very nervous. As well, you get nervous about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I attended uh-huh. John Dickon, who's been playing for how long? No, uh, he's uh, thirty he years. Dead. He also can't play without them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't, can't either. Yeah, I mean, I can sit and talk to you. That would have been fine. Yeah. But if I have to play, there's a little bit of shakes. And then, yeah. and then you notice it. And oh, then oh, it gets yeah. worse. <laughs> and it's like a snowball, you know. And you, just, you know, people, you know, I've, I've realized, are, are very forgiving. I know they are, but you, you don't know, want to completely mess up. You know? No, you don't want but, but But at the same time, I mean, I know for, with, with, these, uh, with these shows, I can't tell you, I mean, how many, how many mistakes have been made mm, and, and yeah. things have gone wrong. And, they know, are very forgiving, yeah. yeah and yeah. and sometimes they prefer it in a way. Yes. Joe, Joe and I had a show once where technology failed us. I mean, just everything <laughs> wouldn't work. You know, we had all this amazing slides planned. Yes. So it's just, just the two of us, so there wasn't a stage set. We, we decided, let's do visuals, you know. <laughs> Nothing work, man. The computer froze, <laughs> and oh god! And then I started forgetting my lyrics. Oh, but it's it, we just like carried on with art, and people were really forgiving. You know? It does it does freak you yeah. out a bit. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've ever had it uh, had a time on stage where you've completely frozen, like like uh, stage fright. No, but without the pulls, I would have. I'm sure. Really? Yeah. Because I've I've had, I, it's, believe it or not, I've actually had that in my career. I've mm. done thousands and thousands of shows, mm. but um, probably there've been sections where there'd be two three seconds yeah which seems like half an hour where yeah. actually you cannot think of anything uh, any other line in front uh, you know, yeah yeah, yeah. Going no, i can relate to that i remember um because it used to sometimes well it happened once when i was lecturing um i remember going off with some other lecturers to one of the grahamstown schools to present stuff on yeah. the on the technicon and each department sent someone to talk to the school about you know, graphic design and painting yeah. and this, and I talked about like photography. And I went last, and I just sat there in the sidelines, you know, waiting for the, one, for the others to finish getting yeah. more and more nervous, you know. Oh, and I, oh, geez, when I got on there, it was just disaster. <laughs> oh, <no>. Absolute <laughs> disaster. I'd forgotten what I was supposed to say. I just <laughs> mumbled and stumbled. <laughs> no, it's the only time that's ever happened. No, I think, well, there's nothing you can really do about it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, um, I think it's the waiting, you know. Yeah. Just, I remember sitting there, I thought of that story when I was sitting there for 20 minutes waiting. Yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. And I thought, well, if I didn't have the pulls, it, you know, I'd probably... Yeah. You know. Well, you never know. You never know. It's, it's, it's like a, um, sometimes the adrenaline gets you, it pushes you to... Mm. No, to but you also got a really good way of making people relax. And I feel, hope so. I hope and, so. and we can see Gary there, it's just, he's a rock. You know. Yes, no, he is. We know nothing's going to go wrong nothing's technologically. Gonna, everything's going to go gonna absolutely fine. perfectly. It's all going to be very German. If only you stuffing all knew what could go wrong with Gary. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. <laughs> Mark Stanbury, I have an original work by Tim Hopwood of Carbon Black from the Freeway. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I, I give so those. many of my works away, I forget. <laughs> got them. The problem with the artists. Mm. It's always like, okay, gee whiz, can you fix my plumbing? And then have this artwork and it's actually uh, the guy's like yeah i'm there right <laughs> i often give for birthdays and weddings and stuff oh, well. my it's, soul. A, it's a nice you know it's like it doesn't cost me it's cost me the print 
<laughs> and, and people who say, well, but yeah, but you should be selling the prints for like 3,000 or whatever. But for me, it's like, oh, it's only 150 bucks to get it printed. <laughs> <laughs> I look at things all the wrong way. <laughs> now, listen, um, it's, uh, I've, I've actually, just to, to make you a little bit more relaxed. No, I'm relaxed. I'm totally relaxed. I'm having another gin right now. Excellent. Do it, do it. Put a post right there as well. We've got gin and tonics here. Um, but I've got a little message um, from a friend of yours. Um, we we found we found uh, we found this here. Let me let me let me put it up. It's Mark Private Private. Oh, pretty. Um, I arrived uh, the P Art School Technicon Art School in 1998. Okay, and we basically walked into this first lecture. It was um, Pine Pinar, the late great Pine Pinar. I miss him. Uh, great guy. And and there was this other guy, long hair and glasses. And um, yeah, so the lecture start, Piney sort of lays, you know, sort of lays down how the art school works and this and that, and yeah, everything's great, and, and he goes on and then eventually finishes, and then, um, yeah, they then Tim Hopwood introduced us, and he starts talking, and I'm listening to this guy, and I'm, and I'm listening, and yeah, after like about, a, like about a minute or two, I'm thinking, like, is, is this guy slightly drunk or, or, or maybe on drugs? You know, <laughs> you know I'd, I'd heard about these arty types and what, what they're capable of getting up to and all that. Um, but yeah, so I'm listening to this guy, I think he's completely mad. I mean, he's on and on and on about, um, you know, everything that we're going to be teaching you, you have to one day forget and you're going to have to learn everything and then forget everything to become a great artist. And, and, and I'm just like, just, just hang on. Like, I'm, I just want to be a, like a photographer taking pictures for, you know, like nice sunsets for Getaway Magazine, you know, and maybe one day get into the fashion world or something and, you know, hang out with the models, make money and, uh, you know, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, in any case, so the lecture finished and, 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 and the, days, the, the days went by and, and the weeks went by, you know, and, and basically we're about a month or so into the, into the game and uh, I hear that there's, Tim's got an exhibition at, at, at the Opera House, okay, down there near Govan Becky. So it's a Friday afternoon, Friday evening, so I have, have a couple of drinks and there's no, nothing better to do. So um, we'll go down to the, the Opera House, we'll walk in through the door and into the foyer area and there's just like, bam, there's like, like 30, 40 giant pa uh, photographs and I'm like, I've, it just, it's, it's, I've just never seen anything like this. I mean, it's basically portraits, but it, the, the colours are just absolutely intense colours and and some of them are blurred and some of them are out of focus and they've all got these big black borders around them that I couldn't work out like squiggly black borders and, and, and there's black and white but it's 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 it's, it's, it's high contrast black and white uh, no detail but but very powerful very graphic I'm just and it's just amazing I'm just like wow it just just changed everything I stood there and I just went in a fuck fashion photography this is what I'm gonna do <laughs> and that, that was it right then and I just thought well you know basically uh, 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 maybe uh, maybe I do want to become an artist and um, uh, 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 yeah so uh, it was just one of those changing moments you know and um, you know I look at that work today and I've just never seen anything like it and yeah I'm all over you know I, I often think how absolutely lucky we were, how, how lucky I was to to stumble upon this guy in this little art school in a town in the middle of basic tiny little you know little city in, in in South Africa, and it was just absolute pure luck. I mean, uh, I was just really really fortunate, you know. And um, look, uh, it basically probably. Uh, um, any potential that I, I, I had to maybe, you know, one day have some sort of financial success as a commercial <laughs> photographer was like sort of flushed out, you know, flushed down the toilet right there and then. But uh, another whole sort of road opened up, a road, you know, God knows where it was going or where it's still going. But, you know, it was, Hoppy, you just inspired me. You basically, yeah, I suppose you saved my life. You know, but I could have maybe still been working at Getaway Magazine. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe I'd have some money, but nevertheless, um, the point is, is that yeah, I put you've been a great inspiration to myself and to many, many other artists. I mean, look, there are very, very few people that uh, that can that wear uh, you know the creative shoes that you wear and walk around in them with such ease. And uh, you know, the whole time you're basically producing stuff that you know original stuff and stuff that's never been seen before. Um, yeah, so. Um, just thank you so much for 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 basically um, 
yeah, for just uh, being there and 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 for for, for being a good mate and and for uh, all all the inspiration and and I mean I look at the, uh, the you're doing this and you're doing that and 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 the whole time you just produce stuff and it's just and it's always just original and it's and it's and it's and it's it's groundbreaking in in many ways and um yeah we, we just it, it just like sort of like a, a thanks and 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 I really appreciate it and there's many of us out there that are really. Yeah, thank, thankful for, for, for your greatness and your fucking genius, bro. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks a lot again and cheers, bro. Okay. Bye. Uh, a legend. Wow, well, thanks, Mark. Yeah, it's Mark. <laughs> it's the kind of things that you never hear because they said at your funeral. You exactly, know? exactly. <laughs> thanks, you know? Mark. No, but it's, 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 it's lovely, you know. It, but and, Mark and, also has been a big inspiration to me and to a lot of other people, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think he's he's one of those out the box kind of thinkers. Yeah, absolutely. One of those, those guys yeah, that, that no. really does. Um, no, he's, he's influenced the way I think a lot. Um, he doesn't toe the line. No, he doesn't toe the line. Yeah. No, he's not afraid of unpopular. No, <laughs> he's yeah. not. Yeah. No, you got to enjoy it. Yeah. As, as in Monique and says, he's funny as hell. You know. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Mark and I just we spend hours just sitting around a fire talking rubbish, laughing. <laughs> but isn't that what life is about? Yeah, I mean, yeah, eh? I mean your your yeah. connections, your mates and, yeah. and and you have this um this this And Mark has this a beautiful ability to to make funny out of the horror. Yeah. You know, because he also spent I spent five or six years doing it, I think he spent three. Yeah. Working for the Sunday Times, doing okay. you know, doing a lot of seeing a lot of hectic stuff. Yeah, and hectic stories, and often the only way to deal with it is just to laugh. And you, yeah. if somewhere in that story you'll find something funny, something, <laughs> and you'll laugh because it's yeah. the only way to deal with it. You know? Yeah, I, I, and just just that's what I love about Mark's stories. There's, yeah. they're not just funny; they're also yeah. tragic. Yeah, but there's this laughter and relief. Yeah. you know, <laughs> well, you can't what, stand uh, to the bus forever. <laughs> that's what comedy is about. I mean, yeah. in in, yeah. in the end, you know, is to. <laughs> put that, put a shirt on, says Philip Mustard. This is my hippie shirt, Philip, okay? Just like Chilba. So Philip <laughs> Mustard was um, my big hero when I was a student. Oh. It wasn't yeah, really okay. Obi, it was Philip. Oh, okay. Yeah, he Philip was a master Obi. student, and his work was quite different to Obi's. Okay. Um, and um, he was really, really good. Um, okay. And, and I, he was more sort of like me. He was, yeah. I was very shy in those days. Philip was a quiet guy. Obi was larger than life. Yes, you know? yes. And so I didn't really relate to Obi's, you know, um, way of photographing. And yeah. so Philip was my big inspiration. Mm, mm. Um, and um, and for mean, a while, my work was indistinguishable from his. Well, it was. It wasn't as good as his. Yeah, it was okay. like a bad copy of it <laughs> for, a f you know, for like yeah. six months. And then, I, and then I managed to develop a style that was a different to Philip's. But you could see it was influenced by Philip. Well, you, you, I mean, you need those guys in your in You your, do. You need your, your, your mentors, your, your heroes. Mentors, you know? yeah. That's so absolutely. thank you, Philip, for being my mentor. Indeed, Philip. And, uh, you know, it's like a... Um, uh, like you say, you know, everybody's... Um, uh, You've got to find your own way eventually, and, and there's do, all yeah. these influences that mm. you take take on board as you go along. Yeah, you must have had many with your comedy. Plenty, and, uh, plenty. Know. Aaron McElroy for me. Yes, was, yeah. Aaron, it's, it's, it's amazing, you know. Yeah. And, and 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 also they generally artists are, are very giving. I don't know if you found that. Aaron. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Generous in their, yeah. in their yeah, in their help. Yeah, they, so they know it's such a cut part. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Especially. Um, you know, musos and and mm. I think comedy as well. You know, it's. It's um, such a terrifying thing to get out there, yeah. uh, you know. Fine art is, is more, it's, it's less collaborative. Yeah. You know, music is always collaborative. Yes, You're always yes, going to work course. with other musos. And, um, and uh, there are generous artists out there, and, uh, but there's also artists that are not generous, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but we don't worry about those artists. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, but there is definitely, when you're a young artist, you need to surround yourself with people that, yeah. um, that talk about art. Yeah. yeah, they don't talk about gossip about other people or yeah. they talk about art and photography um, and, and they don't talk about cameras and films and papers and yeah. well, now it's, you know, pixels. Yeah, and pixels yeah. They talk about images. Mm -hmm. and that's what I always try to encourage my students to do because we never talked about that sort of stuff that much. Yeah. You know, it is a science as well. You need to know the science, but yes. you also um, need to, it's, it's about images, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, but it, yeah, it, uh, like uh, uh, I find with uh, with the music um, the music stuff as well. It's it's uh, you put yourself on the line, mm. and and I think um, 
I, I don't know how, I, obviously you, you've done both. You've done the music mm. and you've done the, the art. And, and do you find that, I mean, it's, it's a, it's, it's quite personal, you know? Yeah. People, yeah. if somebody doesn't like your work, you, it's like a knife in the heart. Oh, no, that doesn't bother me at all. Doesn't? No, no. Because we, I mean, yeah, no, I, I do find that in PE, people are quite, um, they're quite hurt if you, if, yeah. you know, with, with criticism <laughs> of their work. And no, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Not? No. Because oh, yeah. I, Rose was very harsh. Okay. So okay. Obi would like tear your work to shreds. Really? Yeah. Sometimes he would literally take it off the wall, <laughs> tear it up, you know. And and but he'd always and he'd, he'd literally just like drag you over the coals, you know. Um, <laughs> but he'd always say, "But but I like you, you know. You're, yeah. you're a cool oak. Yeah. This is not about you. It's about yeah, it's your about picture. picture. Your picture's cuck, <laughs> you know. And so we learned to separate ourselves from <laughs> our funny. work. Our work is not us. Yes. It's a reflection of us, sure, and you can take it yeah. personally and get hurt, but that's not a wise way to be. Because in the world, you're always going to get people that are going to like it and people that are yeah. not going to like it. And you mustn't listen to either of them. No, you no. Know? You're, you're growing all the time yeah. in the end. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if uh, um, Gary's got a, a little thing. While, while we're talking about uh, Ubi, I've got, a, I've got a little thing here from Ubi as well for you. What? Uh, yes, here we go. <laughs> um, no way. This, this scene, Tim, Tim, <laughs> blow me away, Tim, Timmy, Tim Hopwood, Tim, Tim sounds like a sounds like um bus driver in Liverpool, Tim, Tim, or some sort of tiny Tim. Um, but Hopwood, Hopwood does ring a bell. Uh, well, 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 I'm getting, um, I'm a bit aged. I've got too much diesel and dust in my head. There was a Hopwood. Ha! This is long. We Wait. We talk for hours. No, no, Hoppy, no. Hopwood. <laughs> hoppy, Hoppy, round the block. Let's rock. Hoppy, Hoppy, Hopwood. Yeah, I remember him sort of in early 90s, 92, 93. Um... Nice guy, really, really enthusiastic. One, one does have to ask the question, um, of all the, say, 200 students that I've had over all these years, I mean, most of them were seriously cuck. <laughs> but uh, um, Hoppy would definitely go into the, the top 20. And that's saying quite a lot. Look, um, I, liked, I liked Hoppy, I really liked him. I have to sit in a bar chair if I think of Hoppy Hopwood. Um, so, uh, for one thing, he had enthusiasm. And I always said, uh, in terms of photography, if your photographic sales are not filled with passion, then your ship will never leave port. Well, his ship um, probably hasn't gone for a studio in London, Paris, and New York, and Milan, but he did achieve, he has achieved. And the thing I liked him about it, him is that um, Hoppy is that he had enthusiasm. He was colourful. He had a sense of humour, and he worked hard, and he was creative, very creative. Good mind, good thoughts, originality. <laughs> He's sort of a. If I think back now, uh, I, I don't know. I, I could have spent more time with him because in his year I had I had this for uh, for Francois. Francois, we, we, we studied quite a bit. It, it took quite a long time for him to to yeah, to, to show oh, me his shame. test trip. So uh, I do apologise, um, Hoppy, for not spending more time with you. But we did indeed uh, work well together. We had some fine times. We did some good things. We did some bad things. We, did, we never really did any grey things. So um, yeah, there was your no grey. Your obviously no gray. branched out. I hear that you use uh, vinyl records for. for Frisbees, so uh, you have a collector of that, and uh, I listened to your your CD you gave me of your music. It's really, really uh, quite nice. So uh, <laughs> thanks for being here in those years. I really, really thought we had a good time together, oh, yeah. and let us progress and let us go forward. Um, and uh, I wish you oh, all the best, Hoppy, upward, and I'll end up with the words that uh, of John Lennon. Uh, he said, uh, in terms of music, uh, before Elvis, there was nothing. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, it's gonna be for you. <laughs> oh, nice. Before man. Webby, there was nothing. Yes, <laughs> indeed. So he was at Rhodes. Yeah. He Rhodes, so he was at Rhodes, yeah. and he was like really massive in the in the eighties. Yeah. He really burst onto the scene with a okay. book that he did called Iris Fontaine to Zier Fontaine. Wow. So everyone was photographing in black and white, black and white. It was yes. a serious time. Black and white pictures of the political situation, the struggle. Mm. Um, and Obi just came out with this book of, big book of color photographs of okay. um, black people, color people, white people all over South Africa. But yeah. like um, just larger, you know, big, colorful, bright, saturated colors and them, them living life. You know? yeah. It wasn't just black people suffering. Yeah. There's black people having a jaw outside a tavern, yeah. you know, and you could see he's like spent time with them, he's jolled with them, yeah. and yeah. They, they like him, they trust him, yeah. you know, you could, it was an incredible book. So it was very influential, he was the, he wasn't the flavor of the month, he was the flavor of the next, you know, five or six years. Wow, yeah. 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 So, and yeah. everyone wanted to come and study under Urbi. It became yeah. quite difficult to get into his... Well, you made it into the top 20 there the at least. You know, oh, well, he was a funny know. character. He, <laughs> funny character. <laughs> he had quite a big name in Germany um, because he'd lived there for a short while and studied yeah. there. And um, I remember when Peter Barnos was studying under Urbi, this was later, about four or five years after I'd left, some Germans came out to study with Urbi, oh, five right. or six of them. Is it? And I, went, I used to go and visit Buddy you know, for weekends and we'd you yeah. know, we'd always... Drinking and photographing, that's what we did. <laughs> Drink and photograph, take photos, oh, like you know. Um, and uh, these Germans were so excited. Uh, yeah, Obi, Obi is a master printer. Yeah, yeah. A master Very printer. good, very good. Yeah, because yeah, he was the, okay. one of the world's best color printers in the color, okay. in wow. the darkroom, the color darkroom, okay. which was like a primitive Photoshop. You know, yeah. you, you, could do, you could do what you did in the black and white darkroom. You could yeah. burn things in, lighten things, dodge things. But you could also change colors, so it was much more intricate. It was like a primitive Photoshop. Sure. And these Germans all came out to study under Obi. Yeah, it's a master printer, yeah. So we she go was. back there. I go back there like six months later, and like, no, different story. Yeah. No, where is this Obi? He's <laughs> always drunk. He's watching <laughs> rugby. He's never, yeah. And they're all packed up and left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, art is like that, you know. But that was Obi, you know. Obi, like he yeah. said, he's apologized for not being there. But, you know, that's... <laughs> You were just an inspiration, Obi, and that's, that's, you know, you didn't have to be there. I learned yeah. the technical stuff from Philip. <laughs> you, were, you, you were talking about uh, Pete, uh, what's it, Pete Barton, Pete Barton was. Mm. Where, 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 is, where does he fit in? Now, well, Pete and I met in, well, we were at junior school together junior, okay, at St. Okay. Augustine's, All right. the Central Crab. <laughs> yes, and uh, yes, he, yes, um, that, was the, that was the picture, there was the yeah. one picture of him there. And then he, um, oh, we, you know, we lost touch, he went to Lawson Brown. Oh, yes. And I went to Gray. <laughs> oh, really? We lost touch. And then I was um, walking along in Grahamstown one day, and this car drives past with Biden Austin and a whole bunch of other oaks that were in his ear. They still yes. all hang out together. Okay. Martin Johnson and, and Quentin Gilson and yeah. Jose Mayo Shayo. And, <laughs> and uh, this car screeches to all. The body jumps out. Hey, hop you upward. <laughs> <laughs> so at the time, I was looking after Obi's house where he was away. Yeah. I was like a, quite a responsible student. Yes. I, I didn't drink too much. Oh, right. It was oh, right. hard working. So chose you, know. you. I did all my drinking and jolling when I was studying graphic design. Yes, yes, it's so, so Barty was like, oh, he's looking after Obi's house. <laughs> uh, like Obi was his huge hero. He okay. just wanted to study photography, but his parents weren't wealthy, you know, they didn't yeah. have money. And, and so, yeah, we just, we went back to Obi's place and Barty was like, wow. And then we just <laughs> became like serious chummies. Just photography, <laughs> well, we got a message from him photography, as well, photography, you know. We got a little message from him too. <laughs> <laughs> Full of surprises. How about that? <laughs> 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 Brown, you went to Cray, and then we separated for a long time. And then eventually one day when I arrived back in town, 
in Grahamstown, I saw Hoppy there, and he was studying with Obi Ober also, one of my heroes, and eventually became one of the best color printers in the country. When I first moved to Cape Town after studying roads, he gave me an in, inroad into the whole Cape Town scene because he was here for a while with a guy called Graham Abbott. And Graham Abbott is the founding guy of, of um, a thing called the Barry Dog Analog Festival, which, is, was just, which just happened about two weeks ago. And uh, we were all up there and Hoppy proceeded to rank almost the whole show, almost like 400 works. And that's the thing about Hoppy. He's, 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 a, he's a kind-hearted soul, but he, he's, a, he's a giver. He's not afraid to share. He's, he's, a, he's a lover. He's a, a womanizer. But he's an all-round great guy. So this is basically a, a shot called Tim's Feet, which was shot in 1997 in Central. Um, and it just shows our collaborative works we used to work together from years ago, really. What I find that it, being in Central or PE was that we used to do like a thing like one roll of film around the block and come back and process and print and see what happens. Studying with Obi but also what he taught us was to become the best color printers in South Africa. Uh, as you can see over here, so here's some of Obi's older prints, 1987 hand print. And the big thing about Tim, if you look at it really, is that all Tim's shows that he did were all printed by himself, by hand, which you don't find anymore. Tim, Tim's work outshone everybody else's. Shooting. The sharpshooter, the Mr. Donkey's Trophy winner. I always remember what he said to me when he was a great. Why didn't he go up onto the stage when we won the Donkey's Trophy and all the rugby boys got up? But they didn't acknowledge shooting. He didn't even go to the army, but he could shoot the eye of a tiger from 10 kilometers away. Poppy um, is not just a great uh, photographer, he's a great user. He actually is a great man with woodwork. He's excellent with all forms of wood. Like if you look at something like turntables, how he's fixed all these, like Dachan Dirk Ace, Will Freud Tour, told me he sent you 20 turntables and guess what happened? You fixed 19. He couldn't even fix one. Um, and it's, without a doubt, it's, a, it's an honor to call you my friend. I love you too. <laughs> Oh, say! Ah, oh, thank you, buddy. No, no, I love you too, man. You, you, we've got a special bond, and, and you know, all those just brings back so many memories of all those collaborations we used to do, having so much fun with photography, and that's amazing. You know, was, I, we were just always talking about photography. Yeah, I love it. Know, I, collaborating I love, I, and sh shooting around the block, and then and then yeah, going back and doing yeah, it straight away. Yeah, I mean that's 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 so that's amazing. That's like Muso's jamming as well. You know, it's a, a similar vibe. Yeah, it's the and same I, thing. And yeah. talking about Muso's jamming, I, I see backstage we've got uh, Joe Van Linden hanging around. So I'm going to bring him on. Joe, Joseph, are you there? Hey, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. How's it Excellent. guys? Excellent. How's it, Joe? Are you, are you naked? <laughs> How's it, Tim? No, I'm not naked. I'm just more naked than you. Just a little bit. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> We're naked from the waist down. You yeah, can't yeah, see. you can't see it. You can't see it. It's, it's all hanging out there. <laughs> Well, I'm making from the neck to the belly button. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, Joseph, it's, it it's great to have you on. It's great to have you on, man. I, you know, um, I, I, just, I wanted to get you on to, to, uh, to talk about the, the little project with projects with Tim. And I know we, we've jammed together so many times. One of my favorite bass players. Always, uh, I, always, I always love your bass playing because um, your, your guitar is, is phenomenal. But um, you know, I always remember you for, from, from, from the early days with the bass. And <laughs> plucking those strings like for with sure. with like no. not just like not just strumming them not just like on the, you 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 you, 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 you lamb bass those strings and you get into the twang of the whole thing I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> cool, dude. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's obviously been a privilege to play with you, Gino, and with Tim. Well, yes. okay. Let me let me um yes. let me take a mark. Um. Well, the first project we did was with uh, the Harman, the cellist, where Tim mm, yeah. would um, project his images up onto a screen. And the very first one, in fact, was really cool because he used two different slide projectors. I don't know if you've spoken about this already. No, not yet, but I, I remember that. I remember the Harman yeah. and, 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 and the Yeah, that was our images. first collaboration. Yeah, right. and, and we actually made up a soundtrack to the images, right? So that we were totally inspired by the images. So if you played a dark, stock image, we would go all scary and if you played something joyous and colorful then we would get all happy or and we would yeah, interpret whatever we saw. wow yeah. 
So it was all well, blind. Seen them, you hadn't saw, seen it, yeah. yeah. It and improvised. then Tim started getting creative and started blurring them together and we were making music to it. And I mean, to me, it was just so amazing to be in such a creative space. Like, it was really, really special. Yeah. Was, that is phenomenal. That is, that is amazing. Like, so like immediate, like live um, at the time, just playing what you see, basically. Yeah. So where, where have you gone? No, okay, no, I said, uh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. no, I was saying playing what you see, you know, exactly, so that, yeah, that, that's phenomenal. Uh, immediate, uh, especially it, with, it just, with the hard man, because he's a, he's a master of improvisation and, and a master yeah, cellist. Yeah. Plus he had a little well, the two of you together are just masters of it. Yeah, Jeez, well, no, no, I, I learned well, so much from him at that time. Amazing, man. And, and, and I know that, that um, uh, you know, uh, um, so that Joe, you broke Joe, up you, there for a second. Oh no, no, Saint Joe, you, you you know this. You, I mean, you're a talented muso, and you and you really do feel that stuff. I think you you your your heart is is in that kind of stuff. I think so. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, at the bottom at the bottom of it all. I've got jazz spirits yeah. in my blood. Yeah, I want to. I like. I love improvising <laughs> the creative space, the now, the the moment. You yeah. know, that is where it's really at for me. Totally. Yeah. Um, but yeah. just to just to yeah. go a bit forward now. Uh, mm. Oh, oh! It disappeared. I don't know what happened to Joe there. He was just there. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> yeah, Joe, Joe has always. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we've we've never had a um, a moment with Joe where, where things haven't gone wrong. In <laughs> <laughs> I think down in the valley, uh, down in the valley, he's uh, there. He comes. There he comes. Back. Yeah, okay, we got signal him. down. We got him. It's funny. Yeah, I'm back. Okay, Joe. We, Joe, we're back. back. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. We, 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 we're into that. it. Okay. Okay, so we did a lot of photo symphonies, and um, Tim even bought his first guitar from me. I remember him coming around to my house, bought my Hona acoustic guitar, yeah. which I think <laughs> long, okay. subsequently got stolen or something. Yeah. Um, and, and then about three or four years ago, we did an album of Tim's tunes. You know, I mean, it's become, yeah. in my opinion, a PE classic, absolute Eastern Cape classic, yes. uh, called Songs of Love and Death, kind of Cohen esque. Uh, we went down to Crumb River to my brother-in-law's place, and we recorded on the river. It was we lived the creative wow. dream, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Used all Tim's yeah. I had lots of music. Is that, we is that various two? musicians, Zim- uh, Megan Detroit. And... Yeah, yeah. Just the act was kind of called Zambak Two. Yeah, Zambak Two. <laughs> yeah, that's our little act together. Yeah. Very nice. I like that name. But, but even the album and, uh, still goes under the name of yeah. Tim Hopwood and Joe Fundlin. Yeah, yeah we just yeah. sort of to call it that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, good plan. Yeah. Zambak 2 is not well known enough, and, I suppose. And Joe, I mean, producing the stuff, you, you've done, you've, you have produced a lot of albums, actually. You've, you've got into that, that producing space over the last little while, haven't you? Is he there? Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, okay. I've, had, I've been running a little home studio, a little project studio. So I've had quite a few school kids and part time musicians, nurses, and fishermen that have got a kind of. <laughs> you know, on the side, they've got these original songs they've written, and I've got this dream to make an album, and yeah. I've helped yes. quite a quite a number of them come to fruition. Yeah, um, I wouldn't sound the most technically savvy guy when it comes to all that. That that in, that yeah. side of it doesn't really interest me that much. It's it's more about the creative process yeah. for me. Yeah, and it's a talent. So I mean, you I can you can hear uh, the, the the fact that you can play so many instruments as well. It's also also a help. <laughs> yeah, but he's got the feel. You know, yes. you can feel True. when something is not right. Um, you know, it's just it's a it's a, yeah, it's, a it's a natural feel yeah. that that, that yeah. you definitely got. No, and I think uh, from your dad's uh, you. genes there, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, and and from my <laughs> opa even he used to play he used to play clarinet in a in a swing band in, in Holland in the thirties. So it comes way down. Whoa, yeah. that is it's insane. <laughs> uh, it's it's definitely in the genetics. I mean, uh, I played with your dad, and and I love playing with your dad because it doesn't matter what gig it is, he gives like three hundred percent of himself. He's, he lands up in a in a pool of sweat, sweat after every <laughs> single gig. <laughs> I always get we go Rob. Uh, always get get Rob um, the, the, this vision of Rob um, playing jazz with in in the jazz uh, quartet that we played with, and um, and and it's just water dripping off his nose. Looking around him, he goes, "Yeah, come on, let's go." <laughs> the water's dripping off his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely classic. But but if I can just yeah, get back yeah. to Tim quickly, if I can get back, yeah. get back to Tim quickly, if you don't yes, mind. Yes, it's you know. all about me. Um, Tim came with this, <laughs> yeah, he, exactly. he came with this. He came to me with a song about 
it's probably about 13 years ago now or more even. Um, yes, called, yeah. okay. Well, I called yeah. it Big Silver Bird. He calls it something else. And it was like a distillation of his, of his songwriting of, from, from when he had started playing guitar in his early 20s, let's say. And all yeah. the music he'd listened to and up to like maybe he was probably, let's say, 40 when he presented it to me. And it yeah. was this like crystallization and this distillation of all this experience into this one poem and song. It was so powerful. And uh, it's, on, it's on the album, actually, even though it was made uh, probably yeah. 10 to 15 years before the album was made, mm, we included yeah. it. Yo. And yeah. uh, it remains just one of the most amazing things. And, and a couple of years ago, I, I even studied at AFTER and I even used that song in the, in the closing scene, which was basically a mob murder scene. And, we, and I played this <laughs> behind it. Tim, Tim, Tim didn't actually agree with me in using it, but for me, it gave me goosebumps. And I thought, well, I've got to follow my yeah. thing. So yes. mm. anyway, yeah. So that song is what really, really got me dialed into Tim Hopwood, the musician. And that's why I respect him. Plus, he's written many more. Thank you, Joe. Thank but you, Joe. One. Thanks. Well, yeah, I think we've had a nice collaboration over the years. Eh? Yeah. We've Indeed. had a beautiful collaboration. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, and and, and um, um, I think we've got I think we've got part of that song. Is that that's right, Gary? We, we we've got some songs. So, so stay online, Joe. We're gonna, we're going to play something for you now. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, ah, beautiful video as well. So, um, oh yes, of course. Yeah, this is and Tim made an amazing video for it. Yeah. Yeah. We made uh, Year Before Last and we edited, uh, finished just before lockdown editing. Gee, was... <coughs> it's lovely. It's it's lovely. Thousands of kilometers. Stop right there, to believe that Jesus is coming soon. He'll take us all up in the air and we'll fly through a crack in the moon. That. Yeah, I had to carry out of that house. <laughs> this was all uh, really thanks to Peter Bardenhoff who lent us these cameras. Wow. Because uh, yeah, yeah. he runs photo high in Cape Town. He's riding on a bus with a knife. Very kind of unspeakable deeds have grounded all flights. Maybe he is waiting in some little town where the trains don't come. Where the motel burned down Maybe he's lying in a ditch by the road Glass in his eyes, blood on his clothes Or maybe he's coming on a big silver bird These are some of the rumors I've heard Some of us out there believe that the age of Aquarius is near. She'll help. World to unite, and she'll break all the chains of fear. Never 
stepped out her front door Lives alone in a room with her ear to the floor Or maybe she's coming on a big silver bird These are some of the rumors I've heard Yeah <laughs> Amazing imagery that's at <coughs> Yeah, there. yeah, no, that was a lot of driving around looking for locations. There. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. The old power station, see that, yeah. that train driver must have thought, No, that was the, the easiest, but I mean, <laughs> some of those things are in the Western Cape, you know. Yeah, like, so you travelled. Uh, yeah, yeah, we travelled. <laughs> Jeez, like, and, and I was just thinking that, what, that, mountains that train driver must have thought. Yeah, Joe like, walking along yeah, with a suitcase. Yeah, Joe walking along with a suitcase, like, what? What do you on here, Joe, where is Joe gone? <laughs> there he is. Uh, now, uh, is he back in the stream, Joe, uh, Gary? No, no, it's, okay, it's gone. Uh, he's, he's disappeared for a bit. But, um, no, I, I, I mean, those, you say you, you, you got those cameras from... Uh, from uh, Peter, yeah. From Peter as yeah. well. And, um, and, and, and just amazing imagery. What, what, what did Joe, what was Joe involved in there? Did he, did he play, well, I noticed some distortion yeah. guitar in the background, in the, like right, yeah. right in the back there. Mm. You know, attention to detail there as well, you know. Look, I mean, when I wrote that song, I'd never been into a studio before to record yeah. anything, you know. Yeah. And Joe really loved it, and, and he said, he, let's record it. And yeah. I didn't really know what that entailed with Joe. Yeah. <laughs> for, from my side, it was easy. I put down the guitar track, yes. which I can do pretty much like a metronome. I can keep the pace pretty well. Yeah. And then I put down the vocals on top of that, and I left it with him. Yeah. Not knowing what to expect. And like yes. two weeks later, three weeks later, he comes back and he's got this thing. This whole like, thing going on. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I've never... It's amazing. I yeah. Mean, the, suitcase on wheels is better, says my when he gets it. <laughs> so he had like um, his brother come in and do saxophone and um, I, I helped him. Yeah, William Pinnock oh, came. Oh, Simon, and did some, Simon yeah, and Simon, saxophone? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, William Pinnock saxophone. came and did backing vocals. Okay. That angelic voice you hear in the background, yes. there's something odd about it sounds yeah. like a woman but it's actually William oh wow it's a man because you can hear like it's got a bit of ah, sometimes okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. and then Dollar came and did some stuff some spoken word stuff yes yes I that, heard that comes that later in the song um, but yeah I mean Joe just came back to me with this thing that is like yeah. wow <laughs> and I remember it's like it completely self-indulgent but I, yes. I, I, for about three weeks I just sat there listening to this on the headphones <laughs> It's amazing you to know, hear your own stuff. Yeah. yeah it, like, like I would never do it if it's just yeah. me and a guitar. Yes, of That's course. That's boring. Course. But what all the stuff that Joe yeah. did, like, oh, my God. How amazing. How do you do those sounds? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's not, it's not a, um, an, an ego trip or a thing that you, that you listen to because, because you, you, you just can't believe that from this little yes. song that yeah. you've written, uh, yeah. you know, in, in, wherever it was yeah. that you wrote this thing originally, yeah, and for, to, for it to grow into such a big yeah, thing, yeah, it's amazing sure. to hear. I know. It is, yeah. And uh, then I, I, I remember my friend, one of my close friends, uh, Donald Woodard, um, yes. who emigrated a long time ago to the UK. He came out for holiday and, and we met up and I played him the song. I said, yeah, I've done the song with Joe. And he, he told me afterwards, he thought, oh, oh dear, <laughs> Timothy's going to play a song and it's going to be horrible. <laughs> And to be polite, <laughs> <laughs> and he was he was blown away. You know? <laughs> oh, good, good, good. I'm glad to hear. <laughs> oh no, Grant Unimans, Unimans, uh, Tim, really enjoying this insight of your work and talent. Respect, but uh, shot, Grant. Thanks, man. And Graham Abbott, great song. So Graham was Whoopi. the guy that, uh, you know, Graham can't spell. He, yes, he's, no, it's he's, fine. He's very bad at spelling. A lot of artists can't. It's not, yeah. it's not a problem. No, no, Dyslexia no, 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 or no, no, don't cast dispersions on <laughs> musicians. <laughs> musicians are the same. <laughs> we visual, visual learners. I mean, we're not our academics are often. Wonderful stuff, says Barbara Manor. Thank you very nice much. To Mark meet you, Mark. Thanks. Uh, some of Tim's best work, indeed. And uh, that. that um, uh, so uh, I don't know if we're going to play the, uh, the 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 rest of that song. Do you have a, have a squiz? Uh, Joe, Joe disappeared. I know Joe's internet is up and down. We're lucky we got him on for this long, <laughs> I think. Oh, he says, yeah, to ask Tim to play his first live song. I think I better song. before I have my third gin. Yes, yes. Uh, we, we're going to do some live stuff, ladies and gentlemen. In this lockdown, I don't know about you, but you know, I didn't drink anything for about three weeks. Oh, jeez. Um, you got to have your connections. You know, I was always, um, I'd have a glass, maybe two of wine mm. every night. Mm. Um, and the lockdown came. That's fair. 
Yeah. It's fair. I don't never clap a whole bottle. <laughs> no. But, no, you know, two glasses yeah. of wine with your meal. That's good. And then suddenly, you like, you don't, you know, you go without it. Yes. You know, the first few days I've missed want it. it. Yes. Yeah, you get used to it, you know. Yes. <laughs> and then I got uh, a little half check, you know, when the thing ended. Yes. Thought, Let me start and start too big. You're going to half check a brandy. Yeah. I finished half of it. Oh my <laughs> God, the next day I felt. Terrible, there. But there's only a half jack. Half of a half, half jack. A half jack. I could do three jack. quarters of a bottle a year ago. What happened? It's, it's the aging. It's the aging. All so right. before that get, all goes get to your, my head, let's do a song. Get yeah. your get your guitar there, Tim. We're gonna we're gonna do so a little bit of life. I've got um I've got here as well. I've got a little a little um, a cajon. A cajon. Why? Because live is life. Live is life, indeed. Uh, you know all this. You know that song by Opus. Yes, life is life. I always thought na, it was na, life na. is life, but it's not. It's live is life. Life is life. Yeah. I know. I know. They've heard about that. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I, I got it wrong. No, I, I think I worked it out. I worked. I, I also. Everybody thought life is yeah, life. It's that's what life I thought for life. years. Live. Live. Alan Stapleton. Life. I wish he'd got to know Tim better when he was a teacher. Could have learned a lot more. No, Did Stapes was my teacher. Yeah, I remember learning Shakespeare from Stapes. Shakespeare, you, you, got, were, you told him about You were a decent teacher, Stapes. I did, <laughs> learn, I did learn from you. Good, good. <laughs> he claims to have learned something from you. Lawrence Vestrat, keep going, Mr. Key. LB, the great LB. All right. Oh, that was you. Yes. That was feedback. Uh, no, this must go... <laughs> I thought okay. I was feedback. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. we're going to do the Ballad of Fricky and Chantel, eh? Oh, I see. Let's do it. Uh, which is a song I sort of wrote... Yes, tell us about it. Um, I sort of started writing it loosely based on this couple that I knew when we were students. <laughs> um, but then it changed into something else. Okay. So it's not really about them. Yeah, all right. But it was started off... You know, yes. one or two lines do refer to them. Yes. Lucky you. Yeah. It's called you The Ballad of Fricky and Chantel. And I also try to see how many slang words I could put in a song. No, South yes. African slang words. I yeah, think yeah, I got 38 Like or Eastern Cape slang? No, just South, South African, African slang. slang yeah. Generally, yes. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Ja, Frick was just a oak with the smoke Chantal was just a chick with a pick All he wanted was a took She just gave it a flick Yeah, he was just a china in a diner She was just a cherry looking sherry He tuned a classic one-liner She tuned him, do you smock me, he tuned very They got married and they got a little spot she would tap her on the posy in a cozy. The neighbors all skimmed, she lost the plot. Or maybe got the sickness from a mozzy. For a while he went lekker like a cracker. But if he ballas back, she tuned him cock. One time she even scoped him in the necker. For going around acting buck. So on the side, Frecky got himself a stucky. Lunch times they would buy somewhere tonight. Driving home, he gave it lang tacky. The sound of burning rubber made him cry. Now he stuck, he was all drumming like a slum. And soon he started skimming, he would chuck. But Chantal paid a lighty to go full him Frucky every time they would fuck And now she's the tanny with the money He became the puppy with the poppy She met a grease monkey named Yanni I checked him on my way to Opie Copy Was sitting with some chinas in a diner With them all the cherry drinking sherry I checked her heavy muff eyeliner While the radio played her old Brian Ferry Suddenly the smoke with the smoke Sidles up to the chick luck in a flick I ask him something in Chantel just broke Go 
she gave this oak one hell of a kick. But like I said, Frank was just an oak with a smoke. Chantal was just a chick with a pick. I know you all skim this is a joke, but it can happen so bloody Uh, Sorry, do you know no, I didn't really rehearse that? <laughs> oh, that was great. I loved it. <laughs> nice one, Gino. Nice. Very nice indeed. Oh, I love the slang. I love the slang. You know, you know, and we were talking just now about um, actually uh, when we, we, we had a meeting before the show and, and we got into chatting about um, uh, about uh, when the, the, that old foil fray thing with, um, with the Afrikaans guys. Uh, basically, the, the the Afrikaans culture finding its stride, you know, getting getting an identity um, in in their music, mm, and, yeah, uh, yeah, and, yeah. and and uh, and the fact that the the English speaking <laughs> guys in the, in the Eastern Cape and and, and uh, uh, you know didn't really find that they had that identity, you know, we, yeah. we need something, yeah. we needed something there, and also it was like a um, an incredible moment of. Uh, a protest and, and rebellion against mm. the previous generation for them of course which we'd never had yeah you know what i mean yeah it, yeah it was like a and i think i mean i've spoken to people that were there at like some of the big full free concerts like a stellenbosch yeah you know, it was okay. a big deal you yeah know, it was a really big deal like a defining event in their life you know yes yes where they st I've collectively I've stood together and said like screw you screw you, you know? that's it that's yeah, it we don't go along with this yeah it's a generational that generational gap just yeah. took like a big turn yeah. you know, and, yeah. and, it, and it, yeah. it kind of had to yeah um but yeah you, you, you're right with that that's that slang and that that stuff that's <laughs> i love it we're talking about the, uh, like the albany english you know that whole thing it's 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 our identity uh here in, in p you know? mm. yeah and and, and what yeah. do you uh, your, how do you, no, i think that's why why so many people relate to hagen so well Yes, because he encapsulates that slang so well. Absolutely, he's probably invented a few words himself yeah. for that slang. You know, <laughs> he's, he's such yeah. a such a great encapsulator of the way we speak in in yeah. the Eastern Cape. And PE, it's it's you know. our identity in the end. It is, and we need we need more people like you to to pull that out and to to, uh, to just to put it into history. You know, mm. and and uh, it gives us uh, gives us something to. Um, uh, you feel that we're part of uh, part of a, a part of something here. Well, what so is Gary's pointing at the screen and yes. and and, and putting up, pulling up some pictures of yes. the full fray tour. So this yes, was so full fray. Okay, tell um, me, tell me. Uh, you can actually read my whole full fray story. It's very long yeah, um, okay. on my website. Um, but I, so I won't get into that. Mm. Yeah, the, the 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 way I met the Oaks and the you know Coors and Valiant coming to stay for yeah. you know a week and then. Course actually came back the following year and stayed six months Jeez. in our lounge so i got to know them really well and yes. but this was like i didn't know anything about them okay i'd grown up in pe i didn't know yeah. afrikaans music i was yeah. in first year but my best chummy there at, at Rhodes was a guy called roger and he was um he knew all the stuff you know he knew the okay. um all james phillips's um, yes. music and he knew you know Bands like Corporal Punishment and the Voice of Noit, these underground shifty yeah. bands that shifty music was recording. He shifty. knew all this stuff. And when Full Fry came to Grahamstown, he said, no, you've got to come with. So I went along to the show with him and I was just absolutely blown away. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was the first, I'd only been to Jaluka. That's okay. the only proper rock shows I'd been to. Yeah. And this was just like so, it was a small space. It was the city yeah. hall, but it's small in Grahamstown, the city hall. Yes. tiny. And and it was so loud, eh? yeah. Oh. yeah. And that that trombone of Hanaput von Tonder, it's, like, <laughs> it's just like went right through you, you know. Yeah. It was just it was incredibly powerful. Yeah. So I took this series of photographs at that gig. Okay. Not really knowing what I was seeing or understanding yes. too much about it, you know. Not knowing that James Phillips was this guy that had this big life before he became Benaldus Nimant. Yeah. Um, yeah. As James Phillips, you know, yeah. doing, doing like protest stuff and all the cherry yeah. faced lurches and cherry faced know. lurches were big in Grahamstown I remember I, I remember well, they uh, were big in Joburg yeah, yeah okay yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was you know it's just strange that um, that uh, a Soti kind of like started this whole thing off you know, yeah. in a way yeah. because because he was a Soti yeah. but he was he was kind of like both you know yes. he grew up on the East Rand okay so he was 
fluent in Afrikaans and you know sure. bi- completely bilingual. Sounded yes. like an Afrikaner when he spoke Afrikaans. Yeah. But Kurs said in in a couple of interviews like picking up that record of Vios Bernalis Nimant yeah. with that lurid purple cover. Yeah. And you know thinking what is this? You know, <laughs> and, and then listening to it and 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 realizing like. Um, yeah. But I, this this guy's he's a soti, but he's made this yeah. this album of Afrikaans songs, you know, Incredible. that are amazing and satirical, and and I can do this too, yeah. you know, and that yeah. that inspired Quest to go and do, you know, his. Tell us about that uh, that photo, that 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 photo there. Yeah, that, so that one was part of the exhibition as well, which I only I only had the exhibition uh, many years later, in like 2012, I think, at the yeah. Kaka and Car. I had this exhibition of Full Frey. Sort of like, you know, 25 years after Full Frey or whatever. Yeah. Um, or 20 years. Um, and so, um, now that, ex- that image is gone. Uh, oh, yeah, that's it. The next yeah, one. There that we go. One, there yeah. we go. There's the one. So, so that's, that's an image of Johannes Kerkorl yeah. that I took um, at one of his shows. It wasn't part of the Full Frey. Yeah. It was at a show he did um, at the Grahamstown Festival. Yeah. Um, just, a, you know, probably him and Willem Moller on guitar ah. and maybe one or two others. It was a small band in a small, yes. you know, little intimate venue. And so I went and photographed him, you know, playing his songs. And, yeah. um, and I did, I made a mistake. I took two or three rolls of film and I took one roll that I'd actually shot something on before. Yeah. You know, I'd shot with... And thrown it back into my bag without yes. marking it, you know. Okay. Um, so I reshot on it. And, but what I <laughs> shot before was like a little documentary piece I was doing, a series of documentary photographs of the Grahamstown um, church organ player, um, <laughs> a, a colored guy called Louis. Yeah. Um, he was the kerkorl player. Yeah, so yeah. I basically <laughs> superimposed <laughs> kerkorl over a kerkorl, <laughs> which was pretty weird. That's a thing. Yeah, there, there it is. A, There's uh, kerkorl with the kerkorl behind him. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, and it worked, out, it worked out pretty well. It though. worked out beautifully. <laughs> yeah. And what's that? The happy mistake. That's kerkorl playing okay. is uh, treklafir. Treklafir, you know? yeah. I think right, the big yeah. one is the treklafir and the tiny one is the Christmas brim. Yeah, okay. Yeah, You've the, actually, the little uh, one, the Christmas one. Yes, yeah, the Christmas one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I say. But now, you, you just said something to me, just, it just freaked me out because um, Willem Mora played guitar with him. Yes. I, yeah. played, I played with Willem Mora okay. um, yeah. uh, in, in, in the Southern Blues Band. Um, oh, okay. Uh, with John Reidenbach. Okay. It was the most amazing gig of my life. Yeah, the, the, no, Willem Mora's amazing. The, yeah. the, the, the drummer um, got sick or his father oh. passed away oh. and he had to go down to, back to Cape Town from Grahamstown. Oh. And we were playing in the same venue and he said, he, he saw me playing. He said, come jam. And oh, okay. I had the best jam yeah, of no, my no. life. Yeah, no, Willem Mora yeah. is amazing. Yeah, he's tough, he, he, was, he played when Rodriguez came out that first time. Oh, really? Okay, was that him as That well? very first time that Rodriguez yes. came, that yes. was him playing. In, oh, yeah, my no. soul. That, yeah. I, I didn't even know that. And yeah. I, I, he, he's an incredible guitar player. I yeah, just I know loved he his is, feel. Yeah, yeah. Because he was, I think he was playing... Um, he was obviously in the Gerefemere Blues Band with, with yes. um, but I think he was also playing, if my memory serves me, Frank Frost. Um, if my memory serves me, with um, Bernalus Nemat in his band. Okay, as well. Bernalus Nemat in his Swarte Far. Okay. I, I think he was in both bands, you know, Gee, with, okay. with Kerkorol and, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe my memory. No, he, because he's a, he's a well known <coughs> guitar player. Um, yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I just, I just was blown away by this guy's yeah. playing. This is yeah. so great. And he was no, such a lovely guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. Um, this, this here, it, uh, that's the keyboard player for um, Bernoldis's band, okay. um, Mark Bennett. Um, and th- that's a nice one because it's got the bird there, you know, the yes. little, the foil from the foil. The foil, foil fray. Fray. Yeah. That's it, absolutely. There, okay. there's, Vil- there's Willem there. There's Willem on yeah, there. Yeah, under, under the lights. <laughs> so that's Willem on stage in the foil fray, 1989, Grahamstown. Gee, it was 89. Yeah. 89. That was uh, that mm. was after we uh, just just after I left school. I think I left okay. school in '88, <laughs> and I wasn't. I, I was I was actually just doing mm. my first gig then. I was, okay. I, uh, Crazy days, eh? But Grahamstown was was full of music then. And, yeah, and yeah. We, we were going every year to, to yeah. the festival. Yeah, I remember you and uh, Gary was also doing a lot of big shows then. Yeah, you know, long haired freaky people and Anton's was, band yeah. and Dave Goldblum and I played a lot with Anton yeah. b- around that yeah. time. Anton and Dave were big. Um, I won't say influences for me. Yeah. Um, but massive inspiration. Yeah. Before I'd even started playing guitar, I was like, th- their music, I think, helped me. They were the first, you know, Oaks that I'd seen writing songs about us 
yeah. as like whiteies in PE yeah. now. Yeah. You know, yeah, not not about something else or yes. love songs or Dave and Anton, Dave Goldblum and Anton Collitz were really writing um, incredible stuff. Yeah. And for me, it was like it was a revelation seeing Anton the first time. I was quite yeah. blown away. Yeah. yeah, and Anton and uh, Anton and myself know each other from from school, and and uh, and I think around that time, 1989, he actually got a hold of me, and we started to do mm. that um, that that early stuff. Um, now Gary's got give me a note here. He says uh, we're going to start looking at some more of, of Tim's photos, um, and another another message from a friend. Uh, we've got another yeah, one. I'm just terrified That's of his friends. friends. Yeah, you know, there's lots of them. There's where lots of where them. how did you dig up <laughs> Obi's number? He's very hard. Man. Hey Gina, hey Tim. Uh, cool. sure. <laughs> nice one. Um, geez, Tim, what do I say about you, bud? Uh, what stories can I bring up? We've known each other a very, very long time. We both met at Varsity at Road studying photography together. And after that, we sort of lost contract, contact. Huh? I moved to PE about 12 years ago, and we reconnected over a cricket game. And yeah, we've been such good friends. And, and the friendship continued as if. It hadn't gone. But Tim, Timmy, hmm. <laughs> you're a great guy. Um, an eye of note, but uh, quite forgetful. I'm I'll never good. forget. So it was a few years ago. Um, oh, God, yeah. Married to a surprise party for me for my 50th birthday. Everybody was invited. Well, shit that you could think of. Family and friends came from all over the country, some from other country. And uh, on the night, I was like, where's Tim? I said to Mary, where's Tim? She said, no, I invited him. He should be here. The next day, I get a call from Tim. He says, Carl, I'm so sorry. I just saw pictures on Facebook. I thought your party was tonight. I'm busy wrapping your present. He completely got the date wrong, completely screwed up. And I've never, ever let him forget that. No, you'll never forget it. Again and again. It's my power, it's my weapon, my it's my kryptonite over him. But anyway. <laughs> Tim, you're such an awesome guy, man. I, I just love how you grasp life and engulf yourself in life, whether it's through your artwork, through your creativity in photography, through your, your amazing music that you create. Tim likes food, so I, I like food as well. And I, I, I cook a lot and I try to entertain a lot because I, I, I find it de-stressing. And Tim loves to eat my food. But you always know when Tim's been around because there's food everywhere. Tim, <laughs> stop being such a messy eater. <laughs> Seriously, though, it's a pleasure to watch him eat. And he and his relationship with Lolo, his dog, and I think the love of his life, to be honest. And, uh, you are, dude. Love you. You're a good friend. and You're an awesome, awesome human being. Gino, thanks for letting me have these words on you, because Tim's a man. He's a good, he's a good guy. Forgetful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, cool. oh, thanks, Carl. Yeah, yeah. Carl's been one of my closest friends in PE the last, well, since he moved back here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, it's lovely. But I, you know, uh, you, you need these, you need these relationships in your life. Yeah. To, to yeah. keep you kind you of. You don't grounded. need a lot of friends. No. You just need four or five like close Chinas. Yeah, there's it. And it's difficult because there's so many of my close Chinas who are still very close to yeah. have, have emigrated, you know. I know, I know. And I left know. PE and, you know, it's like especially creative people tend to leave PE. Yeah. And yeah. go and seek greener pastures in Cape Town or Joburg or overseas or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's so we know, stay in here and being poor. We're going down <laughs> with a ship, you know. Are we going down? We're going down with, the with ship. a ship. <laughs> Oh, classic. I have a question for Tim. How did your recent exhibition go? What and, was, uh, tell us about it first. What was uh, it? it was that, that guy um, that Peter Barnes was talking about, Graham Abbott. Uh, he yeah. ran a, he launched an a analog photography festival. So okay. it's all darkroom prints, wow. you know. Okay. Uh, so it was that. And it wasn't anything new. It was all my old work. In fact, everyone who had work on it was their old work that they dug up out okay. of the cupboard. And okay, yeah, was, yeah. You know, that not many people except Graham and one or two others still have dark rooms, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was nice to see all this old work that people dug up and dark room hand prints and so Jeez. yeah, it, it was it was a lovely show. Do you think but it's it a dying work, uh, art? Yeah. Is it, it, uh, are there, are there less, and less people doing this stuff? I wouldn't consider doing it here in the Eastern Cape. It's, it's we are water scarce 
yeah. area. So, you know, it it's doesn't make any sense. Um, so use a lot of water. If you live in KZN, sure, but not okay. here. You know, it uses too much water. Like okay. rinsing, a, if you do a fiber-based black and white print, you've got to rinse it for like two hours. Jeez, like in running water, running you can't water. do that. Yo, okay. No, yeah, and even it. resin coated needs 20 minutes, half an hour per print. You know, the, the council come shut the yeah. water off at the end <laughs> yeah, of the like month, them. you know. They're going to show me water, yeah, I'm right, no, but. No, <laughs> You can process film, that doesn't take too much. Yeah, okay. So that's what I do, I process film, um, and then I scan, and I have digital okay. prints made. All right, and okay. if I need to print something, sometimes I want to get a, a good scan of a print yeah. rather than a neg, especially for black and white. Color yeah. is fine scanning off the negs. But then I go to, to Graham's Darkroom in Barrydale and I, I use that. Okay, so. okay. So you've got your, your, your choice. <coughs> um, you've got some selectors photos <coughs> of, of, uh, of PE. Let's have a look at some, some PE photos here. I, I, love, I love this. Okay, so these so. are, um, I think this is like a little... Um, uh, chronological yes. walk through some of my work and it's, it's okay. just four or five images from each exhibition that I've had. I'm trying to work out what um, that is. So this is not PE, this is when I was a student studying with Webby okay. and, and what I was referring to earlier, very, very influenced by Philip Mostert. Okay. Um, but okay. Uh, my own sort of, um, my own style. Yeah. Um, um, so this yeah, this is what I was doing when I was a student. It had nothing to do with reality at all. <laughs> I, I, I would create these scenarios okay, um, okay. and get my friends as, use them as actors. So oh, right. there's my three, three of my friends, yes. old deserted house in the Bavians Kloof, and we found this <laughs> door there and they're holding the door up, there's their hands. Gee, it was um, yes, yes. So I mean, we didn't know at the time. It's like a fridge. Yeah, it's an old fridge in a house in the yes. Bavians Kloof. We didn't know at the time, but there was this, um, movement, yeah. uh, not, not movement, but a trend in the art world, in art photography yeah. in America and, and Europe, specifically in America though, with photographers like um, um, Gregory Crutzen and uh, it was called the, what did they call it, the narrative tableau. So yeah. photographers actually created their own pictures using <coughs> actors, using okay. scenes, uh, lighting as if from a movie, um, and they created this this thing yeah okay um that you think is real but it's all acted yeah. out okay know? um and this is what we were doing at Rhodes without knowing that this yeah. was going to start happening in the 90s in in yeah in Europe and the States you know okay, okay. It, was, it was the big um art photography movement of the 90s okay okay so somehow we sort of ended but up doing the same doing thing first, yeah. you know, <laughs> I don't I wouldn't say first but yeah, without yeah. knowing about it you know yeah yeah, yeah for sure yeah we didn't have a very m massive library at Rhodes. Um, we weren't really up to date, you know, clued up with. Yeah, there's another one, old but deserted hey. house, and and you know, I've got one of my friends <laughs> to put his hands there, yes. and there's another little hand there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that was that was my student work. Right? You know, not not nothing to do with with anything except yeah. my own imagination. Yes. You know. And, and all the, this one taken? Uh, that was cool. also an, a friend of mine, Jimmy, that I shared a house with, one of my best okay. mates at Rhodes. Um, and like another abandoned, abandoned house. No, we just <laughs> found these houses as they were. You know. All right. And Gramstown? Yeah, that was somewhere in Belmont Valley in Gramstown, outside Gramstown. Jesus, okay. And that was our lounge. I'd sometimes take all the furniture out the lounge and, and make these scenes okay. my friends would act in. Yeah. Yes. And then Andrew um, Buckland. Yeah, then, then my next knows. body of work that I worked on was was portraits of of other other photographers, other, you know, other yeah, artists, artists, musicians, yeah. um just general Andrew is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, he he blew my mind. The first time I saw him we did I uh, was doing a show with Anton called okay. Unplucked. Unplucked. And yeah. Stella. Right. Stella and myself mm. and Anton. They were such and a and huge Andy. figure in Grahamstown. He right? was. He was amazing. Yeah, and just, uh, you, uh, you can't talk about Grahamstown yeah. theatre without Absolutely. talking about Andrew. You know? That physical, physical mm. theatre thing that he had just yeah. down. It was just yeah. amazing. He, the, the first, one of the first shows, I can't even remember what the show was called, but he did it with a drummer. I think he had a Polish hero, and an awesome drummer. Mm. And he did the whole physical theater with with uh, with this drum wow. with just the drums and wow. it was it was so cool <laughs> yeah and then he also did so those shows with um lionel newton those were yes amazing of course, of course yeah, yeah, yeah. 
feedback and yes you know, the, uh, the ugly new new and those things yeah yeah those are amazing amazing things that was Anna Carstens. Oh wow! Um, I started going to see the nude girls when they first Nudies. when they first came on the scene in Cape Town. Um, end of '95, they appeared. Yeah. Uh, you know, they'd been in where were they? They grew up in Sunset West and Belleville. Yeah, yeah. You know? They were still in Bush. Yeah, it was the other side of the Buddha was curtain. Yeah, it was. Uh, and they just uh, they really took Cape Town by storm. Eh? Cape Town yeah, yeah. didn't know what to make of them. They were just an yeah. incredible live act, and. Yeah. And I fell off them when they first started off the first few months they were gigging Jeez. in Cape Town. I went backstage at the River Club and chatted sure, to them. Sure, River Club. And they were, they were like keen to be far off. They were enthusiastic and hungry and yeah. you know, there, there was no managers or anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no bodyguards. Theo and Francois. Yeah. The yeah, Owens. Off, all of them. And uh, they, they used to come down to uh, Einstein's and just blow mm. the place oh, apart. Yeah, I, yeah, I sure. remember that on the beachfront here yeah. in PE. And that's my, that's my friend Dollar Sepeto. He's a painter yeah. in New Brighton and a poet now as well. A really brilliant poet. He's, uh, um, is he the guy that's uh, been chosen with you to do this? To, uh, yes, do this that's that Marco's doing a movie on. Yeah, yeah. for the, um, for the uh, Nelson Mandela um, the art, art Museum. museum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, so t tell me a little bit about that. Is that going to be an exhibition? Is no, I'm not sure exactly what it's for. I think it's for educational purposes for okay. the museum. They All just right. want like a document of Dollar's work and my work because they like the way that we interact with the city yes. in our work and in his poetry, and not just his paintings, but okay. his poetry as well. You know, there's a yeah. strong sense of place that comes across in, in Dollar's work. Yeah. Um, and they like that in my work too. So they've putting together this little film that, that oh, your brother awesome. that your brother Marco yes, is Marcus, doing. Yes, Marco is going to um, do. One on dollar and one on me. So oh, that's amazing. I'm not sure exactly what the plans are for. Well, I'm but sure it can only be good. Yeah, it was an honor to be, you know. Yes, We're sort of recognized because... Uh, yeah. Yeah, the Art Museum, I think, is, is I'm very grateful to them. They've yeah. bought quite a lot of my work. Um, they never used to buy local artists' work before Melanie Hillebrand came. Yes, you know, Mel. The previous guy, what was his name, Clayton, yeah. Yeah, he didn't buy any local artists. Yeah. You know. He bought Picasso prints. You know. That was, was, was my, when my mother started working yeah. there as well, you know, she might. She <laughs> yeah. yeah, when your mom um, was there and Hillary was running yes. it and, and now Emma's running Emma it and continuing, continuing Melanie's you know, good work. And 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 uh, totally um, to to support the uh, for the guys out there support the the yeah. art museum is it's it's amazing it's just, it's an incredible little hub of of um, of art you know yeah. be, uh, this uh, one. that one is a, a portrait that I took of one of my he's the director of one of my favorite films Cinema Paradiso okay um, yeah. which was a film in about eighty nine it won the Oscar for the best foreign film art film it's not really an art yeah. film. Um, it's an Italian film, yeah. you know. Well, it's uh, a very good, of course. It's it's just a brilliant film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's it's just a brilliant sort of like. Um, have you seen it? Act. You must see it. I must have seen it. I must have seen it. He's in Grahamstown. Homage I think to see cinema it, you know? and the love of cinema. I'll have to rewatch you know? it. Just, yeah, you must. I've seen yeah. it five or six times. Okay. It's so beautiful. Um, uh, and he came to Cape Town for a film festival, and I phoned them up and asked them, "Please, can I come for a film?" He's one of my wow. heroes. Wow. So uh, yeah, there I went. Craig. Craig sake shot for like a show. <laughs> Craig Pinnock. And a nostalgic trip indeed. Cool man, cool man. Why are you going now? <laughs> <laughs> Is that bad enough? Yeah, What's this? Up. That's that's uh Theo. Theo. Uh, at least um yeah. uh uh yeah, Theo, Nugles, Nugles. Theo Kraus, yeah. Yeah, Theo Kraus. I'm getting oh, yeah. confused with Francois the drummer and Theo. Yeah, yeah. Francois the drummer. Theo, Francois Theo, the drummer, Theo, Theo, Theo Kraus. Theo Kraus, yeah. Incredible guitar yeah, player. So that's him on stage. They let me come onto the stage at a gig. and. Gee, you know, it was okay. It was fun. Take photos. That's yeah. awesome. And, uh, I know the guys are, 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 especially if you're starting out a band, it's it's great to get to get guys like you involved as well. Mm. Um, to, I think to get the Yeah, when, they, when they're young and starting out, they're hungry as well. Yeah. They want the publicity, you know. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, and now, um, um, just uh, okay. This is the, the. I see that's the old uh, the power the old power <coughs> station, Abby. Yeah. So most of the rest of the pictures are of PE. So yeah. the ne my next three 
Um, we had an Eminent Child album cover done here. I think a lot of album covers are done. I think so, yeah. A lot of album <laughs> covers, yeah. I remember sending my students off here to do an album cover. Yes. Graphic design students I was teaching. The well, band wants an album cover. Go do it at the power station. Christo <laughs> Fury, that was who did oh, it. Oh, Christo, yeah, yes. Yeah. He did our, our album yeah, cover. Yeah, Chris was very involved in the music scene. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I see him often in J-Bay when I go there. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Is, he, is he still down there, still doing photography as well? No, he, he um, does cricket now. He does, he yeah, he films, he films the, the cricket. Films the yeah. Camera, camera. Yeah. Yeah. Duncan Phillips, your life has definitely been filled with many magical moments, indeed. Many magical moments, Duncan. Darren Scar, the Polish drummer who played the show with Andrew Buckland was Maciek Szybot. Thank you, Terence. I'm going to look him up because he Here was phenomenal. I remember the time when he was doing the time. He was, he, it was, it was a, a scene where, he, and he had the hi-hats going. Wow. It was, it was like time. It's, it's exactly time. It, was, it sounds like time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was, oh, I loved it. I loved it. And, um, uh, and I see Margot Muir here. Yes. What is? What, Thank you, Margot, for listening. <laughs> yes, no, I see. No, we... What single track, if you have no choice of all, should, should remain in the world? What single track? Uh, sorry? If you track. had... If you have no choice of? Of more? A uh, single music track. Oh, a single track, music. Mm, I don't know, what would yours be? Oh, like, like your, it's, it's kind of like the, the, the same question you ask me when you say which album did you buy for the first time. Yeah, that kind of, but if yeah. you were just had to left one with track. one track. Oh, that's hectic, eh? That it's is very difficult. so hectic. Because it'll change, it'll be different now yes. to, you know, last, yeah. year, last year. Because yeah. music is also something that you hang on to yeah. a certain track because you remember a certain time. Yeah. But if life. I was to put a gun to your head and right now choose. Hold it alive. Hold it alive. Okay. Yeah, it's just because of that opening, yeah. that opening two, three bars. That's yeah. all I need, actually. Yeah. That's, I could listen to that on a loop. Mine, <laughs> I think mine would be Dance Me to the End of Love by Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen? Yeah. Okay, you're, you're a big Leonard Cohen fan. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I was luck, lucky enough to see him live in London. Okay. Uh, on my birthday. Oh, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, it was the day. It was the day after my birthday. Ian yeah. Fairley's on. I see. How's it, Ian? Ian. Yes, I printed that one that we're talking about right now. I printed that in Ian's darkroom. This one yeah. on, on screen now. Yeah. Oh, excellent. That exhibition I printed in Ian's darkroom. It might have been Ian Fairley that took the pictures of this of the past station because he took a lot of pictures of us as well when we were yeah. doing our gigs yeah. too. <laughs> now that whole body of work I printed in Ian's darkroom. He had a lucky little darkroom. Oh, magic. And, and that one also. So this is from that same body of work. Whereabouts is that? Uh, is uh, this is all in the industrial area in PE. Okay, okay. Um, and, you know, I didn't have any plan with this exhibition. I just drove around and yeah. when the light was nice, far off things. It was not done in any systematic planned kind of way, which uh, that wasn't the way I worked in those days. I only started doing that do you know, see later. The, do you see the shot immediately when, you, when, when you, you're pointing the camera? I mean... It, do you see what it's going to look like? Yeah, yeah you, can, you can get an idea, visualize it. What it's so so you, you kind of know I've got a yeah. good shot here. Yeah. This is going to be good. Like, yeah. Or this series. or Yeah, generally, yeah. yeah. Not, not in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, when you're starting off, you're you starting don't really off, know. Yeah. It's like you're finding your way so in the dark. So it's kind of a skill you, know. you, you develop. You pick it up, yeah. yeah. That's um, beautiful. It's, it's like crazy. It's like, <laughs> that's that old mill building in Govan and Becky. Yeah. Um, so industrial, like no windows. No windows. What the hell? Pretty weird, eh? <laughs> yeah, guy and walking that, past on crutches. That was obviously bricked up. The mm. pool and this is one of my favorite buildings in P. It's not there anymore. I yeah. think they've uh, they've knocked it down Where or they've was done it? something to it. But it stood for decades. It was a little shop in Short Street and, and Swatkop Street. You know the Swatkop Street going parallel to the railway line in North End. Yes. Yep. Yes. Down the it bottom. It was on there. And my old wow. professor Robert Brooks. Yes. Um, who was also a big influence on, on my work and the way yeah, I think no, right, yeah. about things. Um, he took me there once and showed me, okay. and he called it the, he used to take his friends down there, they'd say to him, they'd come to pee and they'd say, take us on the, to see the sights of pee. <laughs> so, okay, we're going on the desolation tour. <laughs> so the desolation, and you take them down and show them the house where Biko was, the building where Biko was murdered, and then under the freeway where it's all dark, and, and then he, go into Swatkop Street and, and a few other little <laughs> things, but this is one of the things you used to what show them. them. And that was, um, uh, go back to that one, Gary. Yeah. Um, so that was, I was with um, uh, Greg Kutsia that day. Okay. I was taking Greg Kutsia Greg. On, yeah, on, on <laughs> Prof. Bobby's desolation tour. He's been on, he's been on my show, Greg okay. Kutsia. We were talking about the same Greg Kutsia. 
White Ben uh, with weapons. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Now, Greg Kutsia came on my show and pretended to be me. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> he did quite a good job. <laughs> okay. Okay. So he was with me. I was driving around PE, showing him stuff like this. And, and we drove past that building, and that guy just walked past with his black bags. So I stopped, and yeah. I asked him to walk past again. And I paid him, oh, well. paid him 20 bucks because <laughs> okay. I missed the moment, you know. Okay. But it was such a classic shot. Well, it, looks, oh, it looks brilliant. It looks brilliant. I remember Greg was with me that day. Oh, wait, okay. That's and that was uh, also I was going to visit Pine Pinar in Red House and we came back, me and my friend Danny yeah. came rushing back to get to the folk club. It was Sunday and there was this fire outside the, sure. this, the power station. Okay. And Danny and I stopped to take photos. Okay. It's an iconic place, you know. It's it is very iconic for PE. Yeah, yeah. And 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 then the fact that it was it was such a uh, like generating these huge amounts of power for mm. so many years, and then it's just desolate. Mm. And then yeah. also, I mean, it's such a a stark presence when yeah. you drive over that bridge in in yeah. you know in Sunday's River, yeah. at least uh, Swatkops. Swatkops, yeah. And and you just, oh, it's flat and yes, it's and standing it's there. Really, just like yeah. You know, there, there, there's a song that that uh, Sting. Really Sting and the Police did um, Synchronicity as part two. Synchronicity part two. Uh -huh. uh, it's got that feel. Let's have a listen to that song. It's got okay. the feel of a power station. It's all about Newcastle and the shipple okay. and stuff. It's amazing. I'll, I'll listen to it again. Yeah. It's, got the, it's a, one of the, a great album, that Synchronicity. Brilliant, brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. I love it. I love the piece. My favorite of these. Yeah. yeah. Especially side two. It's not a bad song on it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's, it, uh, I, uh, We're showing our age talking sides, yeah. Side one, side two, what are you <laughs> yeah, talking about? A, yeah, you know, what is side two? <laughs> and me building arms. So this, this was um, uh, the next body of work I did on P uh, two or three years later. We are just further off on uh, Govan and Berkey. Yeah. Um, for about six months or so, just walked up and down Govan and Berkey wow. with his... With these old cameras, it didn't really matter if they got if I got mugged, you know. They were okay. Cheap old 120 snap cameras, you know. Okay, okay. Um, Gee whiz. And then I also had, um, I was interested in the way Governor Becky was changing. Yeah. Becoming very African. Um, you know, you felt like you, it wasn't the same as it was 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, and it was, um, there was a lot of vibrancy and life and, and a lot of informal trading going on. So I photographed okay. the place mainly empty on Sundays, but then I recorded a soundtrack, you know, of just people walking and selling and oh, yeah? shouting and taxis. And so that was playing while the images were Gee, on the okay, wall. Okay. You know, just put on a little tape deck in the exhibition. Yeah. So you've always um, had this audio visual thing kind going of, on. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Do you think you're an audio learner? I, I don't know what my wife is a teacher. She always checks, sees people often as, as, as visual learner or audio, or audio sort of um, learner. I suppose I'm a bit of both, eh? Is it a visual and audio? Yeah. yeah. You, you're probably cause, because yeah. you, 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 find, you find the need to. Yeah, I, to I, I, I think more visual. I remember yeah. people's faces, I never forget a face. Yeah. But I mean, I, I'm very bad with names and. Yeah. But for some reason, dates and at least the numbers, I'm good with numbers. Yeah. Like I can still remember mates of mine's phone numbers from when I was a light <laughs> no, no, we did, to, but we did, Steve, we did tend to Steve remember. Steve Yester. I haven't phoned him <laughs> since standard four. 391337. <laughs> Donald Woodhead. Double three six five oh four. <laughs> five double one six oh seven. I, I don't Adam, know. Like. Adam and Simon Lawson. There was three three five one eight six. <laughs> I haven't found those numbers in thirty know. years. Mine was. I, I was Great. five one two one six four. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 warmer. Five one two one six four. That's the one. But <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I'm actually remembering it because. Uh, those people used to, st you know, some people when you phoned in the old days, they'd say their number to you. Yes, you used to pick up the phone yeah. and say, phone, phone, phone. Yeah. Why phone. Why would you do that? You I just know. phoned the number. I know. I know what number I've just phoned. Why are you, you telling me? Maybe you used oh, to dial it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to phone my mate Don and his mother would always pick up and she wouldn't say hello or Mrs. Woodhead speaking or anything. She'd just say Double three six five oh four. <laughs> that was all. <laughs> no, hello, nothing. Double it's, three. It's six funny you're talking oh about uh, about Donald. <laughs> I, I'm gonna because um, because I think we might have a little uh, little message here from Donald. I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, see. Really? Yes. Yeah, you guys are really pretty. I don't know. I don't know if Gary's got it. They've got Don. <laughs> there we there go. We, go. <laughs> we got a little message from Donald. <laughs> Must have been about 1986 or 1987. 
<laughs> Timothy and I were at art school together. Uh, and one evening we decided to go to, to, to a PFP meeting, a Progressive Federal Party. Oh, I remember this, uh, what a night. <laughs> and we went in Timothy's little mini. And we took another friend of ours, Dickie Mulder, and another guy, a cleaner from the Portlands with Technicon by the name of Lawrence. And we went to the meeting because we had fairly naive political beliefs at the time. And we thought by going to meetings like this we would make some kind of difference. And at the end of the meeting, it must have been about 11 o'clock at night, um, we decided to take Lawrence home. And that was a mistake. <laughs> because Lawrence lived outside of Port Elizabeth in one of the townships. And everything went fine driving there. But then we drove fairly deep into the township itself. And it was not long after that we discovered that we were being followed by another car. Yeah, and, and we yeah, shut ourselves. <laughs> really? <laughs> we got really scared very, very quickly. We didn't know the area at all, or the layout, the geography. We weren't entirely sure how to get out of there. But Lawrence kept placating us and, and, uh, us and saying, no, everything's going to be fine. But they were following us, and they were following us quite aggressively. Jesus. And then Timothy speeded up a little bit, and they speeded up. <laughs> and we started to panic just a little bit. <laughs> and get yeah. seriously worried. And then, after speeding around several corners, Lawrence shouted to Timothy to stop. And we stopped the car, and he jumped out of the car, and he kind of ran at the <laughs> car that was following us. And when he really? did so, we tried to make our escape. We sped off. And the car kind of went past Lawrence and came screaming after us again. It was very, very bad roads, full of potholes. Potholes is not the word. <laughs> but Timothy so came into his own. <laughs> kind of turned into a demon behind the wheel. <laughs> and he put foot. And we sped through those roads as if he was on some, some kind of racetrack with his car behind us. <laughs> I and eventually, that many. <laughs> yes. after what seemed like forever, we found the right turning <clears throat> and got out onto tar roads with some proper lighting <laughs> and yes. hurtled away from the tar trim as fast as we could. I sometimes wonder what would have happened if we'd been caught. Because when we got out of the township, of course, we discovered that one of the tires was down to the rim. Two of them, I think. Yeah. And another one was deflating very quickly. Yeah. We had to abandon the car at some point <coughs> and walk <laughs> You're right some considerable distance to safety. Yeah, we walked to a bar. <laughs> I sometimes wonder what, what Red line. Red line. Yeah. Timothy and I have spoken about it before. What and would have happened if, dead. if we'd been caught? and dragged from that car. Yeah. This kind of shared experience kind of firms up that story firms up your friendship very, very well, quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. you know, over the years, he became a person I could, <coughs> you know, he was a person you could, you could walk next to or drive you out of trouble. <laughs> drive you out of trouble indeed. Thank you, yes, Darden. Oh, yeah, that was scary. Close shave that. Yo, that, yo. And, and it actually also reminded me of what Graham was asked yeah, talking there. about there. So yeah, it's, it's a very similar thing happened. Really? It wasn't my car though. Graham went, I was staying with Graham for a few months in Cape Town in Woodstock and he got observatory. He got home one night, no, he gave a girl a lift and she stole his phone and was going, look for it now. In, in yo. Woodstock, <laughs> but like Kimpy <laughs> Street. Yes. Flipping Gimpy Street, man. Yes. You go, it's, like, it's one o'clock at night. No. And I said, no, 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 Graham, you can't do this. Just forget it. It's just a phone. Don't worry about it. Yeah. No, 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 he's going to go find his phone. Now. And I thought, like, he can't go on, on his own. Something yeah. terrible is going to happen. <laughs> yes. So I went with him. And um, he 
Jeez, we met this guy. Guy peers out of the darkness. Yeah, we know where your phone is. Yeah. <laughs> Takes us around the corner. And Graham gives the guy 200 bucks and obviously he's gone. You know? yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. We drive around a little bit more. And another guy appears. No, we know where your phone is. Yeah. It's around here. Follow yeah. us. And they take us to this road and it's like, yeah, it's down there. That, that green door there. Yeah. And it's like a, a road and a wall at the end. Yeah. And it's a dead end. And there's a row of houses and there's some industrial stuff on the other side. And there's a door, there's a green door. And Graham's like, no, he's going to go. Door. Bugger that. I said, I said, Graham, just just go to the end and turn around first so we're facing the right direction. And, and, and I'll get into the car while you go dock on the door. So I, no sooner had I climbed the car, these guys, I don't know, four or five of them, just appear out of yes. the darkness with bricks. Oh, my son. And they come running at the car and they just roll these bricks through the windscreen. Like three or four bricks. Jeez. And I just see this and I just duck under the dashboard and I just floor it. Yeah. And the tires spinning and yeah. I, I look up and there's no windscreen, it's gone. And I'm flying, <laughs> flying down this road and there's Graham up here and he sees all this, he's running through the street, his door's still open. I slow down a little bit, he grabs the door, I drag him for about 50 meters and he hops in and off he goes. <laughs> Whoa, okay, what oh, just happened crap. there? <laughs> what <Man>. the hell, Tim? <laughs> Yeah, and we got home, we were like, we were so high from the I'm adrenaline, sure. you know, like we cheated death. <laughs> yeah, did, what could they did. have done to us? Yeah, and it was brick, they uh, uh, stabbed us and statistic. taken the car, I don't know. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, do, do but it was a high, we were on a high for like uh, the rest of the, Jeez. Uh, for the next day. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> Tommy would be proud of you, Tim, that's what Shelley says. Who's Shelley? My dad, Shelley's my cousin. Hello, oh, cousin. Lovely, <laughs> uh, my dad family. would be proud of me, I don't know. The uh, family yeah, on board. Proud of some things and ashamed of others. Okay, let, let's let's have a look through the photos. Here. What, what, Finish what is, the photos. What is that? Yeah. that is, uh, oh, this is so. Uh, this is more uh, stuff taken in in Governor Berkey from okay, that exhibition. Okay. All right. Um, you know, I just love these strange architectural yeah. uh, structures that, that you, is do, weird. you don't know what the hell they are. Oh, why, the why did they build that? You know? <laughs> what purpose Triangular does it serve? Roof. Yeah, it must serve some purpose but we don't know what it is it's yeah bizarre and i look i like the bent sign yeah. as well, <laughs> that little thing there some uh, taxi moved it over what angles is that thing and there? What is air this conditioner here? oh right the yeah. little, uh, okay it's going from that yeah. side yeah, yeah, yeah i see it <laughs> uh, i've i've seen that yeah and i wear somewhere in uh Bottom of Albany, turn right, and it's yeah. there on your left. <laughs> it's always bottom of Albany. Yeah. Like the bottom of, the bottom of Russell. Bottom of Russell, right? bottom of Albany, right? <laughs> sort of nondescript yeah. places. <laughs> uh, sort of Art Deco, maybe 100, 100 years ago, and, and it's still got elements of it, but it's been so buggered up yeah, you yeah. Know, that you can't, you can't yeah. tell. I, I like the decay and... Graham, you saved my life, Tim. <laughs> okay, hang on to that bloody door, Graham. Uh, saved mine too. <laughs> Um, I, I like the it's not the decay that I like I think yeah. it's the the idea of mortality yeah you know and the passage of time which yeah. photographs record so well yes you know they record the, and they always have you go back through the history of photography and photographs in the eight photographers in the 1800s already started yeah. photographing paint peeling off walls yeah you know, and buildings falling down because it's it's so linked in and and connected with time photography yeah. because you're freezing a little instant in time yes do you think it's a human thing to like uh, to 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 want to go back to those times like like i wonder what it was like you know it, it's it's a human thing to to want everything to be good as new again but you can't maybe, it's like maybe. this whole yeah it's also our instinct to our love for photography also comes through um that that freezing of time and, and a world in flux in constant movement yeah. we can freeze it and we we yeah. think we yes. do, i don't know if this actually works i'm not yeah. really this is not my ideas this yeah. is mainly susan sontag's ideas we yeah. we think we can <coughs> photograph it freeze it and yeah. then look at it classify it order ah. it make collections and in so doing understand reality understand the passing of yeah. time the passage of time and human endeavor and stuff like yeah. that whether we can do it through photographs i don't know you know, get, get, get patterns, find yeah, patterns, find, find patterns, order. Find meaning, find order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just us, us, the, the, that horse as well, I've seen that too. <laughs> what, what was it? What, what building it was, was it? It was a um, 
It was a, uh, a leather shop or a saddlery yes. shop or something was in Govan and Berkey. Also, a bottom of Albany turned left. Yes, it <laughs> P. I think it was P. Leather, yeah. P. Leather. Yeah. Absolutely. And that horse was there for years, years decades and decades. Just becomes a, went, a thing that you ride past and you remember. And I always thought, I must take a photo of that horse. I must yes. take a photo of that horse. Yes. I went and photo it. <laughs> and about mm, not more than three weeks later, my mate Danny Boshoff, yeah. another good mate of mine, also one of my ex students and great muser as well. Um, he came down and I was, you know, we weren't going around taking some photo offs and yeah. let's go for a drive and drive past the horse and it's gone. Gone. <laughs> so I photo off it and two weeks later it's gone. Yes. It's been there 30 years. 30 years and now it's gone. It's you take geez. a photo and it's gone. <laughs> so I was like, Danny, uh, it was there two weeks ago. Uh, I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> I see Etienne Fister giving us a, giving us a message here. Etienne. Hello, Etienne. How's New Lovely, Zealand, man? man. How's morning the show in New Zealand. Zealand. Yes, it'll be morning, eh? Morning uh, show in New Zealand, indeed. Uh, this is our. I, I think we've broken the record, Tim. This is our longest show oh, really? ever. I think yeah, we miss is. you, Et. Yes, we do. The brothers, of course, Etienne with the brothers. Um, and and talking about music again, we've got. Uh, I mean, uh, someone who've, who who's been uh, close with you as well, and and someone who, who had a major influence on my my musical journey, Anton Carlitz. I've got a, a great question. Got Carlitz. a little bit of Anton. Yeah, let's uh, let's have a look and see what he is. He's in the early. 21st century, the transition in the film world or, or photography world was from film to digital. And uh, you had some very difficult choices and interesting growth to do as a photographer and as a fine art photographer inside of that. And Tim did something very interesting. He put his efforts and his ego and his enthusiasm into becoming a musician. Uh, and despite his rather uh, acerbic and negative comments about m my abilities as an artist and my impressions of lemons and bananas, which he described as terrible, and um, saying such things to me as, Carlitz, you know about as much about art as a boomslang, I was very uh, enthusiastic and um, um, uh, supporting and encouraging of Tim's efforts in music, and he became um, a competent um, songwriter enough to uh, join the rest of us um, musos in carrying the speakers and <laughs> recording CDs and trying to flog them to the unwitting and <laughs> suffering the indignities of journalists reviewing our work, journalists who mostly know, um, wouldn't know originality, art or music if they um, got it in their soup. Um, <laughs> and um, among being uh, among his portfolio of being a, a university lecturer at his old art school and, and an acclaimed fine artist, um, Tim has endured as uh, um, an all-round artist, somebody I envy uh, for having a multifold um, range of artistic skills. We are all uh, in the little tribe of uh, Port Elizabeth fine artists and musicians, very, very proud to know Tim and of, of his work and his efforts and um, uh, his friendship and his kindness is, is something that I value dearly um, in my life. He, he did make the most miserable best man at my wedding that you could ever have asked for and I would dearly love to return that favour one day to him to be the best man at his wedding. But besides him um, roasting me um, at my <laughs> wedding, um, uh, I, I remain um, inspired and um, amazed by my uh, friend's work <laughs> and his uh, ability to survive <coughs> the chaos of being an artist uh, <laughs> and a musician inside of a very, very off-world kind of place like South Africa. Just um, <laughs> Cheers, Anton. Yeah, Anton, yeah. it never disappoints. Never disappoints. A never great, disappoints. A great inspiration from when I first met you, Anton. Yeah, oh, I don't know. What did I say at his Gary? What did I say at his wedding? <laughs> you roasted him. You roasted him at his wedding, according no, to Gary I, as well. I think I just told the story of the of the idle gossip. Uh, idle gossip story. Well, we told it now live in front of I don't know how many people. <laughs> Shani Schroeder saying, still regularly looking at the drawing you did of a turning point in my life. 
still Kush- laugh. Kushani was Graham's girlfriend when I was living in Cape Town. Oh, is she the one that lost his cell phone? Um, no, that was Graham. Uh, so he was uh, Graham. Uh, yeah, Graham was Graham's partner. Okay. So right. was, yeah. <laughs> Graham and I shared a studio in Cape Town for about three, four years. Okay. Yeah. Since so you and Graham should be dead. She should yeah, be dead. yeah, we should have been dead that night. Yeah. Werner, Werner Lemmer, who can jij die o? <laughs> How's it, Werner? Another, <laughs> another great artist and inspiring character. I love to see these, these guys always using their girlfriends or their wives' um, um, uh, Facebook pages to come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember our first no, video? Do you want to wrap up, Gary? Yeah, I'm, no, no, I'm, no, no, I'm no. Trying, we're okay, we're okay. We're gonna do another. we got to do another. We gotta oh, do an, yeah. We're going to do another uh, song. One, one more song and then we can uh, then we can wrap it up. I think. Uh, let's, let's go through the photographs. Yeah, okay, the okay. photographs. Okay, let's we'll finish on. the photographs. Yeah, let's, let's go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flick let's through get, these ones. Let's through, get to the uh, King's Beach ones. The King's Beach ones. Uh, oh, Graham, so I remember our first studio behind Mulan Rouge Strip Club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. We were on uh, uh, in Brea Street, downtown Brea Street. Brea Street. Still, yeah, at Cape Town. It was still quite dangerous then before it became okay. sort of like, you know. It was like kind of rough like area. Loop Street, yeah, Street, we were on the top floor of a building. We shared a studio with uh, another yeah. dude called Craig. Um, yeah, it was rough. Eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Joe Bloggs saying, uh, saying a group of legends. Absolutely. No, that's not Joe Bloggs, man. It's Alex Boses, you know him. Alex. You know, oh, Alex yes. Boses from uh, uh, Benguela. Oh, right, yes. Yeah, yeah. Plays Jeez. with Bryden. Yeah, Bryden Bolton. Yeah, yeah. 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 Bryden, fantastic yeah, bass yeah. player. I played with him many times. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so, so uh, I, I will have a look at the photographs. Samsung is <laughs> international jeans. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, I love those fashion things that are just okay. like terrible. So, and yeah, fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. I, li- I, like, I like subverting things. Yeah. I, I enjoy subverting uh, dominant um, paradigms, narratives, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Progress. You yes, know, yes, technology, yes. Technology, fashion. Technology. You know, I that. like subverting that. <laughs> Let's have a look. Gary's got some the little slipper company. The little slipper yeah. company. Very nice. You know, we wonder if these businesses actually make it <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. They must have a contract. Yeah, they were somewhere. a leather company. Okay. My mate Wayne used to buy all his leather offcuts from there. Also make another bags out of them. Another sign. Yeah, another bench another sign. sign. Yeah. Let's have a look. That's. Mm, so, okay, so this is now a different body of work. This was the probably the biggest exhibition I ever had in, uh, I think it was 2006. Yeah. I got some funding from the uh, National Arts Council. Okay. It wasn't much, but it was enough to pay for uh, you know my p- paper and film and stuff. Yeah. And, and uh, buy me okay. some glass. It wasn't enough to pay for framing, yeah, but yeah, it was okay. enough to buy glass and, yeah, and okay. cardboard so I can do my own framing. Do the framing. Because I used to make all my own frames. Do you have, you have one of those? Yeah, no, I used to cut it by hand eh, with a okay. metal ruler, 45 degrees. My dad used to do yeah, framing no. for the tech guys. He used to have one of those. Mm. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, no, yeah. I used to cut everything by hand. So I, I would have yeah. to leave like a month and a half, two months before the exhibition to do all the framing because wow. I never had the money to buy frames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, uh, well, in today's term, if you have an exhibition of, say, 30 prints, it's going to cost you about 80,000. Yeah. Me. I mean, who can afford that? No, it's I mean, just a You're going to sell. Like maybe three or four, yeah. or five. You know. Yeah, you so need, yeah, so I used to make my own frames. Yeah. So this Kings Beach exhibition, okay. I got a little bit of funding. Kings Beach. And, uh, and I, yeah, I so photographed. Fence. Yeah, that's the harbour wall. Yeah, that's yeah. fence that side. That's yeah. a um, spot. Yeah. So you, um, I went there for about three years, um, three, four times a week. Uh, uh, my ex-partner Jane and I, we used to like to take the dogs there. Okay. Um, and so I always took cameras, a variety of cameras, shot on a variety of film. I was often okay. shooting expired film that people had given me. Um, and so I spent three years for offing that beach. Yeah. And then I had that show. It was about probably 70 images. And then I, I carried on afterwards, yeah. in the years afterwards, still for offing the beach. So Gee, flipped through some of those. That's, that's dedication. It, yeah. <laughs> that's and that was shot on 4.5 film. So it's sheet film. It's that okay. size. Okay. So that thing a can be blown up the size of the screen Jeez. and it could be pin sharp. You know what I mean? It's okay, okay, better than okay. any digital. It's like well, your you, IMAX look, you'd of have to cameras. Spend, you'd have to spend half a million or yep. a million on a digital hustle blood wow. to get that okay. kind of quality. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, um, the so it, yeah, there's, there's the beach. Um, I photographed off the beach, people that use the beach um, yeah. and the, the little play park there and the industrial 
you know, ore dumps oh, next yeah. to the beach. Happy uh, that's uh, been that quite a popular one. I've sold quite a lot of prints of that one. The um, Playland. Playland <laughs> next to the ore dumps. You know, there's just something remarkably Tom Waits about yes. that. Yes. You know. <laughs> next to the You expect dumps. to see a greasy clown yes. come out <laughs> with a, with a ducker <laughs> pipe or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my soul. What else we got? And there's, oh, yeah, the, I used to enjoy it when the high tide came in and yeah. left the big uh, sure. um, pools there. The yeah, the reflections, the lagoon. reflections and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And the, the leftover towers of the old life-saving towers. Yes. The, and those things they put up which slowly just got scattered by the... So the exhibition yeah. was not just about um, the industrial, you know... Yeah, yeah sort of side of this beach but it was also about how nature changes things yeah these very high tides that we were having yeah. and um you know just um doing away with any uh kind of plans that people yeah. make let's put this yeah. here yeah, yeah. no bugger that it'll uh, the, um, the tide or the sea will get rid of it nature know? does that nature will yeah, yeah it'll it'll take it mm. or the municipality will, the municipality will yeah. bulldoze it yes yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yes. There we go. <laughs> That's and then I got, I got a remarkable <laughs> um, series, The Day They Were Packing Up Playland. <laughs> yes. I managed to get them on the day they packed up. Which I, I got probably some of my best photographs there of these beautiful little yeah. dumbos with the slag heaps in, in the a, background. Treat you know. the elephants so badly. Yeah. Here we go. And there's the <laughs> horses with the... Yeah. Uh, those, those, those Playland things, they, mm. you know, they're all... Uh, there's something very tragic about Yeah, there's something, there's something tragic yeah, about I remember it. Gary years ago telling me about how he took his little daughter to the circus. Yes. It was just terrible. Yes, it's a like, terrible circus. Yeah. Which one was it? It was just so <laughs> awful. Boswell Wilkie. Boswell Wilkie. Wilkie. Yeah. And the horse was all like lame. Oh, it's so unfortunate, <laughs> that whole thing. It was uh, on its last legs, you I know. Remember, <laughs> I remember them being a, there being a, a adver an advertisement in, in the Herald or the Weekend Post, I think. Or, what's it? No, Evening Post with, uh, at that time, the Evening Post, mm. uh, and uh, this is like early 90s, and um, just uh, seeing that advert for a circus drummer. Circus and, drummer. And I, I, I was like 22 or something, I thought, hmm, I wonder. Yeah. And then <laughs> run away with the circus. <laughs> and then John, John Keating, who was another drummer at the time, said, no, no, bro. I went there to have a look at that job. I really. said, when I saw the car parts in the, <laughs> when I saw the car parts in the caravan, I thought, nah. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's no. so classic. And, yeah. uh, there we go. Some more, some more there. But I, I think um, we, we must, uh, we, we must probably uh, start to wind it up now. You know, yeah, Tim, this, I don't know if there's anything else you want to want to chat about, but, but. Um, uh, we, we we must do a live a live song before we go. Okay, we we'll do one more. Yeah, uh, we got one more thing. We got uh, we got uh, two. No, no. One more, one more. We got one more friend. Uh, we got one more friend. Let's have a look. This is a quick one. The quick one. Oh, this is Sean. Uh, yes, Sean. Sean is, um, say hello. Missing you guys. Wish we could uh, <laughs> see you again soon. Yes. Um, don't know with COVID, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare. But anyway, enjoy your evening. Miss you. Take care, buddy. <laughs> he loves you, but not. He didn't say he loves, nice. he, he, didn't lo he loves <laughs> you, but, but not not a long time. <laughs> so that's um, that's the son of Gene that wrote the stuff oh, right. um, for my website. Oh, excellent! Okay, okay. Uh, we got we got a, quite, quite a few of your friends tonight. So yeah, thanks, man. That was really you. great, very really nostalgic, and, and it is lovely. It's, yeah. There's lots of people that love you out there, bro, and it's yeah. uh, it, it, it's great. We, we, he's, he's got a video. We've got a video here quickly before we do our live. Uh, 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 let's have a look at the thousand yards there. What's this from? Let's see what we've got here. Because we're going to have a look at your turntables. Oh, you're going to so look at my turntables. Turn tables, yeah. yeah. So have a look uh, at the, last, um, the last year I've been uh, making turntables. Not making them, but making new cover uh, boxes for them. Yeah. Plinths, they call them. Plinths. Um, and that's how I've made money in They're the last beautiful. year. They're beautiful. And, and we're going to... Uh, well, the song that's going to play in the background is about xenophobic riots and things. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not sure. We'll just... Uh, We'll look at we'll turntables. We'll talk turntables. Turn yeah. <laughs> but it's a nice little track for background. Yeah, let's have so a look. It's got a nice groove to it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so that was the Lovely. first one I did, I think. Uh, okay. Okay, that's the one I sent to Peter Bardenost. Beautiful. I mean, it's a lot of work that goes into that stuff. Yes, yeah. I take them out of the old box, which is usually quite, um, you know, frayed and damaged. Yeah. 
And I've got a lekker stash of uh, Brazilian rosewood and maple from a friend of mine. And I make these new boxes for them. Yeah. That's, uh, I work a lot with that one, the Lenko L75. Okay. And the Pioneer PL12. They're very nice turn tables that were not in great boxes and they can always do with a, with a nice plinth. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. it's, it's also the, the, the art in it is the, is the wood and the, the beauty yeah. of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And especially the Pioneer PL12 is a very um, underrated turntable and it, it deserves to be in a better box. Yeah. Yeah. That's a Lenko, it's a baby Lenko. Okay. Baby Lenko, it's a B54. B54. Uh, sorry, B55. Not like the bomber. Couple after the B52. Yeah. <laughs> There's a fine I little disc for a guy from London. That wood, do you polish it up or it? Um, yeah, I polish it with. Uh, um, uh, What's it uh, they use for cricket bats? Uh, linseed oil. Linseed oil. Yeah. Okay. Um, but Roland has been telling me about it, some, some products you can get for you know painting it. Okay. Get it. I'm going to try experimenting okay. with some paints, you know, some, uh, some other finishes. Like they do for guitars, you know. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, no, no, the, what? They, they, no, that doesn't look no, like That's just a cheapie that I sold to someone. Right. <laughs> There's a nice old Pioneer Peel 25. She was. So I see there was a lot of guys here looking earlier from the turned the vinyl pages. I made, yeah. I made good mates with uh, some of the okay. oaks on the vinyl pages. Yeah. A great bunch of guys, you know, and they, they really, they, um, they love music, you know. Um, it's a big community of vinyl collectors and turntable enthusiasts in South Africa, and they, they love their music, you know. Yeah. I mean, some of them found uh, the guy from, uh, what's his name, uh, from that wrote uh, Johnny Calls the Chemist. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, Falling Mirror. Alan Falling Ford. Mirror. Alan Ford. No, the other dude, um, uh, Nilan yeah. Nilis, Nilis, Nilis Murray. Oh, Nilan Murray. Yeah. Okay. So they found him like in highly reduced circumstances on the street in Cape Town. Oh. And these bunch of vinyl collectors yeah. got together and they started auctioning off their, some of their records yeah. that they had of him. People Jesus. were donating. Okay. And they put him into a little you know, room Spons somewhere in a, in a little house. Oh, that's um, amazing. Uh, and you know, rig, auctioning stuff yeah. off and, and sort of got him playing again. And, oh, that's, you know? that is amazing. It's a, really a nice bunch. Times. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice bunch of oaks that, oh, in the vinyl so circle. Cool. You know? Look at that, beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's a nice link. Oh, that's <laughs> for the records. As yeah, well. that's a little stand I made for mine. Singles. Airbnb house. Well, that's got a little uh, lever for the for lifting it up there. That's yeah, that's uh, another PL25. And they've got, they've got a glass, like a, a Perspex lid as well. Yeah, like, you know. yeah. There's nothing better putting an, re putting an old record on. You, know? mm. you get, the, you get yeah. the crackle, you get the whole thing. And, and you're getting a package, you know, you're getting the yeah. nice big photos yes. and, you know, inner sleeves with the, the visual thing. And the visual thing. Opening it up like a yeah. present, you know. Yeah. And I, I like putting something on and listening to a side, you know. Yeah. I don't always listen to the whole album. but yes. Listen to a side, you know, listen to five songs. The guy spent like, or the <laughs> band spent like months making this. And he loved every song. Yeah, on the that decency album. to just yeah. listen to a half a side, you know. That's it. That's Rather it. than like one song here, one song there. And nice they put song. a lot of thought into it. And it does change the way you listen to music. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. And also knowing that the record is being deteriorated every time you yes. play it. I know, it's got so, a limited lifespan. Yeah, so you don't just put it on as background music. No. So when no. I, often when I listen, I sit down, I have a glass yeah. of wine, you know, listen. Yeah. Anyway, it yeah. yeah, gives, us some, gives me a lot of joy and a lot of other oaks joy. Tim, it's been an Do you know, it's been marvellous. Yes, uh, the drinks are even finished. Yeah, the drinks is dry. So yes, uh, the the world fun. record for the longest show. It's, oh, awesome. uh, it's been more than two and a half hours. Oh, uh, there's Mark Schull, one of my uh, big students. Oh, well. Hey, Mark, thanks King for joining Oppie. us. <laughs> he says. Mark, <laughs> probably my, my best but a student, ex student, oh, really? Mark Shaw, yes. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Most of the others have given up. They realize oh, it's, a, it's a losing game. This. <laughs> <laughs> like Pradhavan's got into painting, Danny took up music. Oh, uh, yeah, no. But Shuli's still shooting and he's a brilliant, brilliant photographer. Oh, brilliant. Well, we've got, we, we got this, uh, this little uh, camera tricks going on, yeah, just for you. Uh, so grab your guitar, we're going to do one, one more song. Okay. And uh, thank you everybody for joining us. We, we've, we've Thanks the, everyone. Eh? I'll do it's the competition after this as well so that you can win a, 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 a box of Fitch and Leeds as well. We'll do it after this. Um, I'm going to head out, uh, head onto my, into, onto my what, what you call it, my, my cajon again. And we'll do a bit, of, uh, a bit of live stuff. A bit of live act just to end up, end of the show. Fantastic. It's been great fun tonight. Eckhart Gerber, how's it? Hi Eckhart. Thanks man. Graham Abbott. Thanks <laughs> for watching everyone. Yes.
This is a song I did uh, that I wrote many years after uh, the event, and I was with uh, that character there, uh, Graham Abbott, <laughs> and we went to um, hear Mandela the first time he came to Cape Town after he was elected president. So it wasn't when okay. he came out of jail. It was like yes. 90... Um, it was 94. Okay. Uh, just after the election. Yeah. Uh, two days after the election, he came to Cape Town. And, uh, you know, there were half a million people uh, in the city hall, in front of the city hall. Yeah. Uh, it was just insane. And we, we climbed on a building to take photographs and then mingled with the crowd. And But this song was written many years later, thinking back on that, that time. Lekker. I didn't know what to call it, and my crazy neighbor, <laughs> Plumber Rob, thought of a perfect name. He said, Hope was inevitable <laughs> hope is inevitable hope was <laughs> was was inevitable, inevitable. okay so that's what it's called Whoops. excellent thanks plumber plumber rob love it so cheers to the ghost of plumber rob yes. thanks thanks for the song title lecker i just need to check i haven't been playing much this last year no, no yes, neither is anybody. I thought I was wrong here. Yeah. That, that <laughs> must be on that one. Sorry.
I climbed on a rooftop and waited for you to appear Until the end of my life I will always remember that day The CD just fades out. That was nice. Play softer and softer. <laughs> Tim! Thank you so You're much, Tina. Thank you so much. Lovely, lovely show. Fantastic. Lovely chatting to you. And Loved thanks it. to all my mates that sent uh, those little video that clips. Was it was so good. Uh, I feel like I've been Wayne to my Heath. own funeral. Uh, I see that. <laughs> You had a funeral before you did. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. You can keep this one. It's no problem. <laughs> Lauren Bardenos, thanks for the Thank show. You, Thank, Lauren. You. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. There, she's sending you kisses as well. Ah. Mm. I miss Graham Emery Abbott. <laughs> That's his full name. Graham, Graham Emery, we love you. We love you, young man. Hamish Graham Emery Abbott. <laughs> Thank right. you, Hamish Graham Emery Abbott. <laughs> All right, let me just get this, uh, this the microphone on here. We're going to turn this down. We're gonna, we've got one more thing to do, and that's a competition. Wherever you are in the world, it doesn't matter where you are. I, I, I don't know about New Zealand. I think maybe even New Zealand. It doesn't matter. You can win a case of pitch and leads. We'll send it to London. We'll send it to England. We'll send it wherever uh, if we can. So, uh, so let us uh, let us know. We, I, I want what I want. I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to take this down here yeah, to see what's going on here. What, uh, I know there's something here that I must take <laughs> take down. <laughs> there we go. Um, and uh, what, what I want to do is I'm going to play a song on the on the drums. I've got the drums here, uh, the, the full drum kit. Uh, I'm going to put the drum cam on, and then. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I will uh, I'm going to play a song. I want the name of the uh, the artist and if well the song and the artist in the comments. And uh, whoever does that first, whoever comments first on in the comments gets a, gets a can of Fitchard leads. Uh, it should be it should be there. There we go. There we go. I'm there. I'm there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tim Tim's not allowed. To, Tim's getting one already. So that's fine. All right. Let's hit it. Let's see if we can get it. First guy to put it in the comments wins wins Fitch and Leeds. We kept it going because what the hell, it's Tim, and we had good fun. Thank you to Tim Hopwood for popping in. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to Fitch and Leeds. Thank you to Spa, and thank you to Amobia. And make sure that you're here next week on, on, on Saturday. Saturday we've got Dennis Ellis is coming, our board shaper from PE. All the surfing guys are going to be talking about surfing stories. We're going to talk about everything about surfing on Saturday. So if you surf, if you like surf, if you just take Dennis, pull in. All right. Woo. Na 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 with me. Smoking out the face that's feeling. Relax it down. Coming out of PE town. Gonna drink, find a shot. 
Never mind your liver, get to Gina's spot. Gina's spot. Get to Gina's spot.